A crisp, cool afternoon. The scent of college football tailgating in the air. Fans gathered ready to cheer for the purple on this final September Saturday in Big Ten country. For the Wolverines of Michigan, what was once lost may now have been found. With a conference win over Penn State, Lloyd Carr's team has set its sight on a now bright future. Along the shore of Lake Michigan, the Wildcats of Northwestern look to regain their early season form, which included a spectacular come from behind victory over Nevada. Both teams have gathered today in Evanston, Illinois. It's Big Ten football, and it's next. Will it be a senior at the helm or a freshman leading Michigan in its first road game of the season? We'll find out shortly. Ryan Field in Evanston on a perfect late September Saturday afternoon. The Michigan Wolverines are in town to take on the Northwestern Wildcats. Hi, everybody. I'm Wayne Larrabee along with Chris Martin. Dara McIntosh will join us on the sidelines in a few moments. Well, the Michigan Wolverines have won two in a row. Resurgent defense, but also a co-captain who's really stepped to the fore. Well, Mike Hart is a special player. He's a physical runner. He runs behind his pads, meaning he has great vision and balance and cutback ability. He likes to get the ball down towards the end zone. And what I like most, Wayne, is he knows how to finish his runs and get the ball in the end zone. Meanwhile, the quarterback situation in a bit of a state of flux here. Chad Henney has been cleared medically to play off a knee injury. Ryan Mallett, the freshman, has done a nice job over the first, last two weeks of the season. And they're both very similar type quarterbacks. Big physical. They have the measurables. They want to stand tall in the pocket, deliver the ball down the field. Northwestern will be without its all Big Ten caliber running back Tyrell Sutton, a lingering ankle injury. So much of the load falls to the quarterback, C.J. Bechet, here today. He'll be at the trigger of Northwestern's spread offense. Stay tuned to the Michigan Wolverines, the Northwestern Wildcats. The kickoff is coming up. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by U.S. Bank, home of the five-star service guarantee. By Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. And by Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. It is a beautiful, crisp, cool afternoon here in Evanston. Michigan and Northwestern, the third member of our broadcast team, Dara McIntosh. Let's hear from her right now. Dara? Well, it seems that Michigan has struggled against the spread offense this season. In the first two games, they allowed 73 points combined. But it seems they've gotten their confidence back in the last two games, allowing only nine points combined. When we spoke with defensive coordinator Ron English earlier in the week, he said that his team is a young team, but that they've started playing better these last two weeks because they're becoming more comfortable together as a unit. Today's test should be a very good uh, game for Michigan because they haven't seen a version of Northwestern spread so far like this this season. Guys? Derry, you're exactly right. They were replacing seven starters from a season ago in that defense. So early on, there were some rough moments. Suzuki keys to the game. Chris Martin, what do you say? Well, Michigan's got to come out and get Hart established in the running game, get him the ball, pound it. And then defensively, they got to figure out how to box up the spread attack of Northwestern. Coach Carr said they've had trouble when they let the spread get outside on the perimeter. They look to keep it inside. In Northwestern, they have to be physical, go toe to toe with Michigan, and they cannot give up the explosive play down the field like they did a week ago to Ohio State. And the coaches here this afternoon, Lloyd Carr in his 13th season at Michigan. He's won 78% of his Big Ten games. And for the Northwestern Wildcats, one of the youngest coaches in NCAA Division 1A, Pat Fitzgerald, second season at the helm of the Cats, a two-time Bronco Nagurski and Chuck Bednarik award winner as a player here at Northwestern. Northwestern will receive to start the proceedings here. So we'll get a look early on at the Wildcat offense again without Tyrell Sutton. And we'll get a look at the Michigan defense against a spread offense. The Wolverines seem to have gotten their swagger back in the last two weeks. Michigan has dominated this series, as you might expect. 
And they won three of four here at Evanston. Wayne, you talked about the swagger of Michigan's defense and studying tape all week. They're flying around, making plays. They're more confident in the scheme, and guys are making plays all over when their numbers are called. Brian Wright places the football on the tee. Michigan in the traveling white jerseys. Mays in blue, blue numbers. Simmons back deep. Return to kick off 99 yards for a touchdown last week, and this kick caroms just past the pylon through the end zone. There will be no return to start the game. It'll be first and 10 Northwestern at their 20-yard line. For the Northwestern Wildcats, without Tyrell Sutton, much of the, uh, I guess the focus falls on the shoulders of junior quarterback C.J. Bechet out of Sacramento, California. to be the man today. Ball distribution is the key. And Northwestern opens up in the spread offense. Michigan with its spread defense, meaning the linebacker moves up to the off defensive line. That's Craver. Quick toss to the flank, and that's Ward who gets up, and this play's still alive. Down the sidelines, can he get an angle? And down he goes. Rasheed Ward inside the 20-yard line. Everyone relaxed like the play was over, and Ward almost took it to the house. Brandon Engelman, a touchdown saving tackle. And this is just excellent awareness on the part of Rasheed Ward, realizing his need to not hit the ground and having the wherewithal to continue the play. Excellent start for Northwestern, exactly what they're looking for. Guys to step up today and make big plays. So here they are for first and ten, second play offensively for Northwestern. At the 16-yard line of Michigan. And it looks like they're going to need a timeout here. Is being reviewed. An official's timeout to review the play. So right away, our replay official, Gene Carabine, checking it out up here at the press box level. And this should be a good angle on it. And his knee never touched. Not even there. Huh? Excellent awareness on the field, though, by Ward to realize that and to extend the play. Got another look right here, Chris. That was a little tougher angle. That end zone angle from the other side is what really showed you that his knees stayed up. There's another look at it again. Brandon Harrison had him. And then the freshman Donovan Warren appeared to wrap him up, but Ward able to get up and motor down the sidelines. And that's a great example, though, the play call of the effectiveness of the spread offense. You saw a lot of spacing on the field. It starts with alignment, and Coach Fitzgerald knows that he's got to get Michigan's linebackers out of the box. That was an excellent example of what you're going to see today, Wayne. Spread Michigan's defense out. Make them cover wide receivers in space. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. And it appeared from the looks we saw, the video evidence, that that was the correct call. But every play will be reviewed by the replay officials up here. And they could stop the game at any time. 64 yard play has brought Northwestern to Michigan's 16 yard line here in the opening minute of the game. Ward at the top of your screen. Bechet looking the other way. Good protection. Pass overthrown. Ross Lane. It was under bracket coverage in the corner of the end zone. Morgan Trent, the principal defender. Take a look at the Northwestern offense for you. We mentioned up front, Trevor Reese is a co captain at center. At the skill positions, these guys will spread the field. Ross Lane is a favorite receiver, so is Eric Peterman. Rasheed Ward just made the play a moment ago. Omar Conte getting the start in the backfield and running back in place of Tyrell Sutton. Second and 10. Conte, not much there. 
I mentioned Michigan's linebacker Sean Crable will play in the spread defense as a defensive end, and he made the tackle there. Yeah, good observation. He can put his hand on the ground. He's a two-way guy. can line up and get it dropped, but he also can rush off the edge. And that's the compliment. And, and Conte is going to have to be the X factor. Step up for the injured Tyrell Sutton. Third down and nine. Three to the bottom of your screen, one to the top. Bache. Ward inside the 10, but short of the first down to the nine yard line. On a gain of about six or seven yards. Harrison, the nickel back, will play as a starter today. He made the stop. Wayne, that time, this was just a check down by Bache. He knew he was getting heat on the blitz. Good job of Ward sitting down in zone coverage. See the blitz coming right up the chute. Bache knows it. He gets rid of the ball in a hurry to his outlet receiver, Rasheed Ward. The junior from Inglewood, Colorado. Armando Villarreal, four for four this season. About a 27-yard field goal attempt. And the first points of the board. Northwestern scores first. Off the opening drive of the ball game. Three nothing Wildcats Michigan offense coming up next. One another word. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Dara McIntosh, welcome back to Northwestern. Holiday Express scoring drive. Big play by Rashid Ward, a 64 yard play, a little swing pass. Set up the field goal by Villarreal. And Northwestern has the early lead. Dropping back deep for Michigan, Brendan Miner, along with uh, Brandon Harrison. And the kickoff by Stefan Demos. Trying to hook it out of bounds, and the penalty marker comes down. Michigan will get excellent field position to start this drive. Trying to uh, pin the Wolverines in the corner. And he missed. The senior, Chad Henney, will get the start here today. A sprained knee against Oregon in week two. He spent the last couple of weeks coaching up the freshman, Ryan Mallett, and doing a pretty good job of it, I might add. But Henney is the senior, and he's back at the helm of this ball club. And Wayne, you have to believe that Northwestern is going to come after him early, test that knee, see how he moves around, make him move his feet, see if that knee is fully recovered. So Michigan on a first and ten. Hart, the tail of the tandem, and he gets it going left. No surprise there, but a good play made by John Gill on the defensive line of the Northwestern Wildcats. Virtually no game. The Michigan offense, and we begin with the big guys up front. Jake Long is the guy they will follow everywhere. Mario Manningham, the playmaker downfield. Mike Hart has carried the load the last two weeks. He had 44 carries against Penn State a week ago. Second down, quick little toss. Manningham cannot call it in. The Northwestern defense has been giving up big plays at an alarming rate. Four touchdowns of 24 yards or more in the last two games. We'll get to that lineup in a moment. Third down for Michigan. Manningham and Adrian Arrington at the top of your screen. They've got a slot on the bottom as well. Matthews the slot man. Massey a tight end in motion. And Henny behind good protection. Arrington near the midfield marker for a first down. Underneath the coverage of Brad Phillips. Wayne. Adrian Arrington is the third Brandon down Miller conversion specialist. Last week he had five receptions to convert third down. You have play. to First know where he is. Michigan. This is an out Here's cut. See the spacing there. Henny does a good job putting the ball on the numbers. You have to know where Adrian Arrington is on third downs particularly. 15 yard gain to the midfield marker for the Wolverines. Northwestern showing a blitz with Cadella in the slot. And they're coming and the heart's going right this time. And 
making the stop on the play is the big defensive end, Corey Wooten. Let's talk about that Northwestern defense that has been burned by big plays recently. Mims has played well on the outside. Gill and Hahn inside are solid. Corey Wooten is the guy they expect more from and expect a lot from him today. Cadella, a senior, leads the linebackers. And in the secondary, they have been burned big time. At least last week they were. Brad Phillips getting the start in place of Brendan Smith, a strong safety Smith down with an injury this week. Loss of one, second, and 11. Henny, Manningham in space. Manningham got a first down and more inside of the 40. Down to the Northwestern 37-yard line. Sherrick McManus made the stop on the play in about a 14-yard gain. Tackle by Sherrick right, McManus. Right out the shoot, you see Michigan trying to get Manningham involved in the game. He's the type of receiver he needs to get into the game early. He was frustrated earlier this season, Chris, and you mentioned they might try to do that again today. Get him going early. A lot of wide receivers are like that. They need to get the ball early, get into a rhythm, feel the football in their hands. Second down and 10. Manningham, the man in motion. Henny looking that way. Manningham open under the coverage. Steered out of bounds inside the 30 of the Northwestern 29. Sherrick McManus on the coverage. Now, again, Chris, is this zone coverage we're looking at here? It's zone coverage. They're trying to gauge the speed of Michigan's receivers. They're giving them too much respect and too much, too much of a cushion right now. But I like what Michigan's doing. They're getting Henny's timing back. They're doing short rhythmic passes. So Michigan on a second down and short. And he may be changing the play at the line. Mike Hart tried to cut it back, went nowhere. Boy, they are keyed on Hart here in the early going. And it is not one or two defenders, it's three and four defenders that are getting to Mike Hart. Well, you're exactly right. And we talked to Coach Greg Colby, the defensive coordinator at Northwestern, and he said, how do you stop Michael Hart? Well, you do it by population. You get a lot of guys <laughs> to the football, and clearly you see it here. Look at all those jerseys around the ball. You got to wrap him up. He runs through contact. He has great balance. But if you tackle him by population, you can stop him. Got a lot of people in the Chicago area. That's heavy population. <laughs> he may need them all. Eighth play of the drive. Third down. Almost four. And he broken up incomplete. Trying to again get it to Manningham. And that time it looked like McManus got a piece of it. Manningham is not a receiver that likes to run just short routes. Sorry, he wants to get down the, the field. Ball. Looked like that time he gave up a little bit on the play, short-armed it. He wants to go down the field. Good coverage by Northwestern secondary and Sherrick McManus. Michigan is going to go for it. They're one of five on fourth downs this season. Jason Jin Jill has struggled as a field goal kicker, just three of seven. So Michigan on fourth down and a long three yards to go. Manningham in motion, Henny. He's got Manningham short of the first down. McManus on a outstanding tackle. Gain of just a yard to the 29 and a penalty marker thrown in the middle of the line. What Northwestern saying is, hey, we're not afraid to go man coverage. You see McManus coming from the other side of the field, playing man to man against Mario Manningham. And this is a hard route to cover. One on one coverage going across the field. Excellent job stopping him short of the first down. Holding the call on the defense. So that nullifies that play. I beg your pardon, not holding, but a face mask. And they mark it off from the previous spot. And it is first down for Michigan inside the 15 yard line a 15 yard penalty for a face mask against Northwestern big turn of events on this particular drive here comes Hart bulldogging his way down to the 10 yard line on a gain of about four let's see if we can pick up where the face mask penalty occurred on that fourth down play a moment ago oh there's the face mask right there on Hart I was trying to get out into the pattern and make a block. My goodness. Critical call. Northwestern had him stopped. Again, yes. And, and again, a call away from where the play went. That's the frustrating part if you're Northwestern. Second down. Arrington, the man in motion for Michigan. 
Manningham. Jukes by a defender into the end zone for the touchdown. Deontay Battle lost his footing, and Mario Manningham an easy 10-yard touchdown reception. Wayne, you don't want to put your corners out on an island one-on-one -on -one too many times with Mario Manningham, particularly when they're spacing out the field. It's a lot of room to cover. Jason Gingell. And the extra point right through the uprights. Michigan answers the Northwestern opening drive with a touchdown drive. Mario Manningham involved early. He's got this 10-yard touchdown reception to give Michigan the lead. With a nimble 50-inch width, it's the most agile, only trail-capable side-by-side -side in the world. Introducing the new Ranger Razor. The wait is over. Razor Sharp side-by-side -side performance. See it up close at your local Polaris Ranger dealer. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Big Ten Women's Soccer. The conference's best go toe-to-toe -to -toe all season long. Wow, what a brilliant play. Catch all the action in HD on the Big Ten Network. Can't keep up with all the Saturday action? You'll run away from everybody. Touchdown. Then catch up with Big Ten Extra Points. Every scoring play from every Big Ten game. Can he get around? Good move. Touchdown. For the throw is caught for the touchdown. All in one show. To the end zone. Touchdown. This is absolutely unbelievable. Big Ten Extra Points. Monday nights only on the Big Ten Network. Dave Rebson in our Big Ten Football Saturday studios. Want to update you on Penn State and Illinois after the Nittany Lions had marched down and kicked a field goal to start the game. Aurelius Ben, the outstanding freshman for the Fighting Illini, brings the ensuing kickoff back 90 yards for a touchdown. Illinois on top of the Nittany Lions, 7-3 in the first win. Thank you very much, Dave. Michigan with the early lead. Simmons. Cut down at the 20-yard line. James Rogers, a cornerback, brought him down. Holiday and Express scoring drive. Michigan, now you have to understand, on fourth down, when Michigan was stopped short of the first down, a face mask penalty against Mike Hart by one of the Northwestern Wildcat linemen kept that drive alive. Last year, Northwestern was the least penalized team of the nation. This year, they have been struggling with that category. Penalized 21 times for 201 yards in the last two games alone. Now first down near the 20. Bechet, quick toss, Thompson. Kind of turned his receiver around. Thompson looking to the outside shoulder. That pass came inside under the coverage of Donovan Warren, the freshman. Exactly. That time the ball was inside on the back shoulder. Kim Thompson was looking for it to be closer towards the sideline. And you would figure where the coverage was, you would want as a quarterback throw it more to the sideline. Second down and 10. Football at the 21 yard line. Looking Northwestern to test that young cornerback of Michigan, Donovan Warren, number six. 
Boucher, good protection again. Underneath, catch made and broke it up incomplete. Drake Dunsmore, one of the only two true freshmen to be playing in the program this season, unable to hang on. Well, if you're Michigan, this is exactly what you have to do. In space, come up and tackle. Make good, solid tackles. You see him squared up. Good job of Chris Graham. Northwestern got the matchup that it wanted. Michigan's guy just did a better job of executing. So a drop and a pass breakup, and Bashay facing third and ten. Got an open receiver, threw it behind him. Ross Lane unable to gather it in under the coverage of Morgan Trent near the first down marker at the 31 yard line of Northwestern. It is fourth down for the Wildcats. A nice play by Morgan Trent, not giving up on the play. As I tell you, Ross Lane looked like he was going to make an acrobatic catch. Good job getting a hand in there, getting a PBU. Accuracy a problem there for the quarterback on that three and out. Northwestern can't find themselves in third and long too many times today. Stefan Demos on in punt formation. Twin safeties back deep for Michigan. Demos. And a line drive rugby kind of kick. And the Wildcats have it covered inside the 45. Michigan, good field position, will start nonetheless at its 42 yard line. Let's get down to Dara McIntosh. Dara? Important, coach told us. The offensive coordinator, Mike DeBoer, told us this week it was very important for Mario Manningham to get his hands on the ball and score. You know, he's only had one touchdown on the season, yet he's the team's leading receiver. He had 19 catches coming into the game, but yet had only gotten into the end zone once. They said that he started out slow, but this was important for his confidence to get into the rhythm of this game and actually get some points under his number. And Dara, he's got four catches already today. Mike Hart trying to follow Jake Long off the left side of that line. Picks up a yard or two. Not much more than that. Quinton Davey came into the linebacking Davey. court. Davey getting the start in place of Prince Quitang uh, today at outside linebacker on the strong side. Going back to Dare's point, we talked to Coach Carr about Manny Am, and he said they knew coming into the season that he would see a lot of double teams. You're going to get a safety roll to his side, but he says he just has to keep playing and continuing to make the plays. Second and nine. Mallet in at quarterback, Ryan Mallet. Hart. Hahn nearly tripped him up in the backfield, and Hart able to keep his footing and pick up about three yards to the 47 yard line, where it'll be third down for Michigan. Mike Denard, a linebacker, made the stop for Northwestern. It's interesting. We talked to Coach Fitzgerald early in the week, and he said typically Michigan Game runs to the, the left play. side behind right Jake now. Long. 73 percent of the time so far today they've been going to the right more than they have the left. Chad Henney started Ryan Mallett on for this series. It is third down Michigan third at about six. Mallett steps up. Let's it go late and wide of the mark intended for Adrian Arrington. It is a fourth down. And it's almost funny. You can just about set your watch to it. On third down, they are looking for Arrington, number 16. He's good at sitting down in the zones, but Northwestern brings the fire to the young Mallet. Make him move his feet and have to think quickly before he delivers the ball. That time they did, and he made an, an erroneous throw. And you're right about Arrington had five third down catches last week against Penn State. Zoltan Mesko, one of the best putters in the country. Fair catch signal is made, and the Wildcats will accept near their 15-yard line. Rashid Ward on the reception. 7-3 Michigan first quarter in Evanston. I'd like a personal checking account. Well, I'm all ears. What's your name? Uh, Rob. Rob Lee. All right, Bill, can I call you Willie? Emma, how about a cup of coffee for Frank here? Rob. I heard that. You married Ernesto? No. A little something for the missus. Here's your milkshake, Kenny. Rob. Uh -huh. Personal checking at other banks isn't always personal. I need you here, Teddy. U.S. bank checking is built around you with interest on balances, free internet bill pay, free ATMs, and the most reward choices, even cash back. U.S. bank, five-star service guaranteed. How many stars does your bank have? Bye, Murray. Rob. The number one barrier against insects and weeds just got even better. Introducing YieldGuard VT Triple. These root tissue scans prove YieldGuard VT Triple roots express more consistent insect controlling protein for an even better barrier of yield protection. 
better root protection, stock protection, and unsurpassed weed control of the Roundup Ready system to maximize yield potential of today's top hybrids. New Yield Guard VT Triple, the yield protection system. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Jack Link's Jerky, feed your wild side. Big Ten Women's Volleyball. Every dig, every stuff, every spike. Great rally by both teams. Really on fire here. See the best in the Big Ten. Compete all season long, only on the Big Ten Network. They are the Big Ten's greatest games. The nail-biting finishes, the unforgettable plays, the incredible performances. Get a double dose of memorable action, Tuesdays, only on the Big Ten Network. Dave Revson in our Big Ten Network studios. Let's get you updated on Notre Dame and Purdue. Corey Sheets breaking it down inside the five. That sets up the touchdown plunge. It's 10-0 in favor of Purdue, Wayne. Thank you, Dave. I tell you what, those boilermakers have it in high gear this season. <laughs> and of course, they're scoring some points. Painter quarterback just outstanding. Meanwhile, Northwestern first down. Omar Conte, nowhere to go. Sean Crable, the outside linebacker, playing on the defensive line today. In the spread defense of Michigan, makes the tackle loss of about three. It is the show for all Big Ten fans, featuring highlights, analysis, interviews, and much more. And sometimes even my partner Chris Martin's on that show. The Big Ten tonight, every night, right here on the Big Ten Network. I mean, so far, Michigan's doing a good job of keeping Northwestern boxed inside. They're not letting the receivers get out on the perimeter. Second down, Conte. Nice hold up the middle. Conte across the 20, stopped just short of the first down. Shakir Edwards made the stop on the play for Michigan. A little inside play here to Conte. Nice cut back right there. Excellent block up front. Needs to protect the ball running into that traffic. But he's a downhill runner. He's physical. Made of the same mole of Sutton, but doesn't have the same burst. Conte was one of the top recruits when he came in with Tyrell Sutton. They thought he would be the franchise back. He just developed a different way. Conte got injured early in his career. Sutton got an opportunity, took full advantage of it. Now the shoe is on the other foot with Sutton down due to injury. Pache on third down. Good safe throw to Conte. He's got the first down. Chris Graham makes the tackle game at three. So a 12-yard gain and a three-yard gain, and out of the hole come the... Northwestern Wildcats to a first down. Jamison, Taylor, Johnson, Graham up front. And you're going to look at uh, Frable in that linebacking core with Graham. They do not have their middle linebacker, John Thompson, today due to injury. Morgan Trent and the safeties really are the experience in that Michigan defense. Trent also with great experience, a senior out of San Diego on the cornerback spot. He's just a solid player all around. First down through the hands of the antenna receiver Simmons incomplete Simmons Stephen Simmons the freshman Richard freshman out of St. Louis good speed and quickness and they were trying to isolate him right there yeah they're trying to run a screenplay they got what they wanted Boucher doing a nice job letting Michigan's linemen get up the field you got to have that catch he had some running room to make people miss second and ten Michigan coming with a blitz, Jamar Adams. Conte breaking tackles. Nice run across the 30 to the 33, almost the 34-yard line. Gain of about eight yards. Chris Graham made the stop for Michigan. And that time you'll see Robert, is that Roberson there running through contact, keeping his legs moving. Actually, it's Conte. Good job of getting the shoulders down low. Watch the cut back here. Protect the football. And doesn't stop. He runs through the contact. Third down and two yards to go, Northwestern. Good protection. Tough throw. Great catch. 
a Ross Lane very close to the first down. Let's go to the studio, Dave Repson. Dave? I want to update you on Penn State and Illinois, Wayne, and this has been about as impressive a showing as you're going to see from the Fighting Illini. Rashard Mendenhall puts him on top 14 to 3 early. I'll tell you what, Dave, Zucker's got him going down there at uh, Illinois. That was a huge win for Illinois on the road at Indiana last week. And now to follow it up with this kind of a start against Penn State, I know there's a lot of time to play, but uh, hey, somebody better start taking notice of Illinois. The Shea on first down. Oh, and he's got Ross Lane, who makes a tumbling catch inside Michigan territory. The 46-yard line of the Wolverines. Morgan Trent and Jamar Adams gave a lot of room on that one. Well, it was a double move by Ross Lane. You saw the pump fake. Good job of screwing the defender in the ground and creating some space. The Shea, a little pump fake here. Let's the wide receiver get up the field. Ross Lane, nice. Ball placement, letting him go down and make a play. So Northwestern on the drive. Late going, first quarter. The fake to Conte. Here comes Bichet, and he's roped down by Sean Crable, the linebacker. Loss of about three. Back to the 49-yard line of Michigan. Second down upcoming for the Wildcats. And Wayne, this type of play is going to be less effective for Bichet because he's not as good a foot athlete. He's more of a passer. You see Michigan close to the ball. Let's talk a little bit about that as we go along here. Michigan has struggled with spread offense. That fact we know. Ron English, the defensive coordinator, admits it. But there's another caveat to that, and we'll talk about it and develop as we go along. Conte, nice hole up the middle. Great cutback. Conte to the 30, to the 25, 20. He might go. Talked to Coach Garrett McGee yesterday, offensive coordinator at Northwestern, and he said someone's got to step up and play big. Omar Conte doing his thing, making a number of guys miss and getting it to the house. So Northwestern vaults back into the lead. Amago via Real for the point after. And Northwestern takes a 10-7 lead over Michigan with just under three minutes to go in this first quarter. Remember what we told you about Omar Conte. He came in with Tyrell Sutton. He was a much more heralded recruit than Sutton. But Sutton's been the star of this team for the last couple of seasons. But Conte shows you what he can do. Well, good running backs have good vision. They have good balance and good cutback ability. And you saw it on that play. Good job of following his blocks. Here it is here. Full speed, good cut back there. Leg drive and acceleration. Not going to be caught. That's exactly what Northwestern was looking for. Someone to step up, make that explosive type of play. That puts a shot of adrenaline into the entire team. Five rushes, 67 yards, and a touchdown for Conte. But you can't say enough about the big people up front. They, on that drive, Chris, they started to carve a few holes in that Michigan front. Absolutely. They were holding their blocks longer and getting to the second level, meaning getting on the linebackers in Michigan, not to allow them to come downhill and bottle up the running backs. Brandon Miner, principal deep back for Michigan. This is Miner. And he slips and falls across the 20 to the 23 yard line. Back to the studio. Let's check in with Dave Revson. Dave Revson, our Big Ten Network Studios. Want to update you on the game between Indiana and Iowa. Kellen Lewis to James Hardy, 39 yard touchdown, his fifth TD in the last three games against Iowa. 7 up. 39 yards. And Dave, I'll tell you something, that Iowa defense not easy to score on. Just ask the Badgers about that. So Indiana off to a good start on the road. They need an answer now after losing that home game to Illinois last week. 
First play from scrimmage on this particular drive. Mike Hart gets the carry. Mark Kane, Adam Cadella team up on the stop, and we've got an injured Wildcat down on the field. And it looks like the aforementioned Mark Kane. Northwestern so far putting a lid on Mike Hart. And we have an opportunity. We'll step away right here. Northwestern leading Michigan 10 7, 234 to go in this first quarter. Welcome back. Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report coming up with Dave and the guys in the studio. All the scores and highlights a busy day in the Big Ten Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report coming up. Michigan first down Mallet in a quarterback as we mentioned his second consecutive drive his pass knocked down by Corey Wooten the defensive end of Northwestern. Wooten has been in on a couple of plays already today. Let's go back to the run by Omar Conte that gave Northwestern the lead. Well, when we talked about Northwestern's linemen getting up the field and, and we see it here. They locked on the blocks and really there's no running room but this is a good cutback. Look how long they're holding their blocks there. Those big guys are firing out continuing to hold on to guys and giving Conte room to run. Third down for Michigan. Mallet under pressure sack John Gill back near the 20 yard line and Northwestern is feeling it on both sides of the ball. Big series for the Cats. You talked about Northwestern. They knew they had to get upfield and get guys on the ball. Excellent job of just beating a guy one on one by Gill, getting low pad level and closing to the quarterback. One of the weaknesses of Northwestern's defense has been their ability to sack the quarterback. Excellent job by John Gill. Zoltan Mesco in punt formation. Loss of seven on that sack. Boy, does Mesco hit a beautiful ball. Roy. Out across the 35 yard line of Northwestern where it'll be first and 10. And a little extra pushing and shoving. Mark Mondros. The principal defender on the play. First down now for Northwestern. And we talked about one of the keys for Northwestern is being physical. And so far they come out, they've locked on their blocks, got wide receivers blocking down the field. Doing exactly what they have to do. And not only the run blocking, but the pass protection has been pretty good as well. They fake to Conte. Here comes Bichet. Who he said he's not a foot athlete? <laughs> 11 yards, first down, and a late hit. Penalty marker down, maybe for a late hit as the quarterback went into a slide, Chris. Well, usually when Bichet runs, it's out of improv. This time it was a design draw play. Good awareness. He does have good feet. But you're not going to see a whole lot of draw plays. Good job of getting to the sticks, moving the chains. And it looked like uh, Brandon Engelman got there a little bit late, and they flag him for 15 yards, tacked onto that play. And now Northwestern once again in Michigan territory with a 36 yard run. And Wayne, what set that up was the fake on the inside dive play. They have respect after Conte just bust the long one. All of a sudden, linebackers are cheating up. Good job of recognizing that by Bichette. On first down at the Michigan 36. Comeback route Rashid Ward in traffic. Got about four. Down to the 32 yard line or just about to the 32. Second down upcoming. Harrison and Obi Eze on the stop for Michigan. Eze making the start in place of John Thompson at linebacker. And really the game within the game are the inside receivers of Northwestern matching up against the heavy footed linebackers of Michigan. Can Michigan guys stay with them and cover these wide receivers across the field. Offensive coordinator Garrett McGee looking on this time Roberson gets his first call. The senior running back out of Pearland Texas. Chris Graham makes the stop. Now we started to talk about spread offense. Michigan has struggled with spread offense but 
They have faced spread offenses in App State and Oregon with quarterbacks who are threats to run the football. Although Bashe just picked up 11 earlier in this drive, he's not really a running quarterback. That means it's a different type of approach, right? Absolutely different. The first two teams that Michigan gave up all those points to, 73 points, were teams that had great quarterbacks that had speed. They could get the ball outside, which is what you want to do in a spread attack. Michigan's job, try to keep it inside. A little different scheme. And a little easier to do when you don't have that dual threat Absolutely. at quarterback. First quarter comes to a close in Evanston. So far, a surprise. Northwestern 10, the Wolverines 7. You're watching the Big Ten Network. Northwestern on a 49-yard run by Omar Conte, leading 10-7 as we start the second quarter. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Tough throw there. Excellent breakup. Ross Lane denied by Jamar Adams. Back to Dave Rebson in the studio. Dave Rebson, our Big Ten Network studios, Penn State and Illinois, the Nittany Lions. And a little bit closer, Anthony Morelli to Derek Williams. It's 14 to 10 in favor of Illinois. Thank you, Dave. And I will remind you that uh, this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Big Ten may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference. I think we're legal, Chris. That's what that does. <laughs> Fourth down coming up. You know, we've got a timeout here called by Northwestern. They're kind of in that, uh, do you try the field goal here? Do you go for it on fourth down? Take their first timeout to talk it over here in the opening minute of the second quarter. Let's get down to the sidelines. Daryl, what do you have for us? Well, you know, Wayne and Chris, when we spoke with the uh, defensive guys yesterday from Northwestern, they talked about getting the momentum back. They said that they didn't have momentum in that game against Ohio State and that it was important in this game. Well, after that touchdown from Omar Conti, it certainly got this crowd going and got the bench going. They were very excited. And just so you guys know, Omar, who obviously doesn't start, this was his longest run in his career. His previous long was just 12 yards against the University of Ohio back in September 2005, guys. All right, Dara, this will be a 49-yard field goal attempt. Amado Villarreal is long, 46. Does he have enough? Yes, he does. It is good. Amado Villarreal puts three more on the board for the home standing cats and they increase their advantage to six 13 to seven over Michigan. Concerned Michigan fans Wolverines on the road for the first time this season trailing by six early going second quarter holiday and express scoring drive five plays 32 yards via real career long 49 yard field goal. Stefan Demos on the kickoff. Puts that left foot into it. Good height and depth through the hands of Brandon Miner, and Michigan will accept it at the 20 yard line. And U.S. Bank Big Ten standings. Take a look at the overall records of these teams. Still four unbeatens in Big Ten play. There's Illinois stirring around at three and one. People wondering uh, how good are the Illini and they may know a lot about the Illini after today taking on Penn State a Penn State team that cannot be looking past Illinois coming off their loss at Michigan last week. You no know, and what's surprising is Penn State has arguably one of the best run stopping defenses but again Mendenhall's already getting off early. They faced two pretty good ones Mike Hart last week and uh, Shard Mendenhall this week. Michigan first down Mallet at quarterback again Henny started played one series. Mike Hart's best run so far today, 11 yards to the 31 yard line. Let's get back to the studio and Dave Revson. Wayne, a surprise developing in Evanston, a surprise developing in Iowa City as well. Ellen Lewis rolling out here for Indiana, finding Wayne Fish, Ray Fisher for the touchdown. It is 14 0 Hoosiers. Wow, Dave, I tell you, you know, again, 
You got Illinois leading Penn State and Indiana winning at Iowa. My goodness. The downtroddens of recent years are rising up, are they not? Hart. He just keeps going. It looks like the play is going to end after maybe a three or four yard gain, and Mike Hart finds another 10 or 15 out of it. A gain there of 15 yards and a first down, but a holding call coming up against Michigan. He has such great balance, like all great running backs do, and he has lower body strength, and you're not going to arm tackle. You'll see it here on the stretch play. He's able to get the ball outside here. Now Northwestern's got to force him back inside. That's where the help's coming from. Watch his leg drop. He just keeps those legs going. He doesn't stop when he gets the initial contact. You know, when you watch him on tape, you don't get the feeling he's only 5'9". You know what I mean? He looks like him. As you're watching, he looks like a much bigger player than that, but he's not. And that's part of why it's so hard to wrap him up. He just runs bigger. First and long off the holding penalty. A little screen pass, and why not go to Mike Hart? And the Wildcats get population to Mike Hart. <laughs> you know, that's a term for defense. You're only going to get at Northwestern. Oh, We've got to get it. population to the ball. <laughs> I came right out of the library, but that's what they're doing. They're getting guys that are flowing to the football. Here, nice job of setting up the screenplay. But watch all the guys flying to the ball. Mm. And they are teeing off on Mike Hart. Forcing him back inside. That's where the help is. So far, the defense is playing inspired. A gain of about four on that play. Second down, still long. Now, good protection. Overshot Massey, the tight end. And Massey took a shot from uh, Brad Phillips. That's what a safety is supposed to do to a tight end who's up in the air a little bit and the pass is overthrown. Yeah, that time, Give him a little love tap. Yeah, a little love tap. And that time, Adrian Arrington was wide open. He just missed him. He's usually his third down receiver. Well, it's third down now. Third down and 16. Michigan just one of four and third down conversions. Watch Arrington inside. He's at the bottom of your screen in the inside position. He's in the slot. Mallet looking for Arrington. There he is. And he's met and driven out of bounds short of the first down near the 36-yard line. Sherrick McManus with an explosive hit. And it's fourth down Michigan. And you know Arrington felt that one. We talked about it. Like to go to Arrington third down. They get the ball here on a crossing route. But this is how you finish a play. Look at him. Turn the helmet. Knock him outside. I think Arrington feels that. He gets the ball outside. Watch McManus close. Puts his helmet right on the ball. Mesco, another gorgeous punt. Rashid Ward out across the 25 yard line. It'll be first down Northwestern at the Wildcat 28 when we come back with the Cats on the lead by six, second quarter. This is the Big Ten Network. Northwestern on the lead. Football fans, be sure to tune in before your school's game for the Big Ten Football Saturday pregame show powered by Suzuki. Get in-depth analysis and previews of each Big Ten matchup, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 Central, on the Big Ten Network. Dave Redson, Jerry Donardo, Howard Griffith, they'll get you caught up to date on what's going on around the Big Ten. First down, Northwestern. Ball tipped, caught by Rasheed Ward, who stayed right with it. And he's got yardage close to the first down out near the 38 yard line. And in fact, he's got a first down to the 39. 12 yard gain. Brandon Harrison was there. Well, this is the old tip drill. Good concentration by Rasheed Ward, keeping his eyes on the ball, able to haul that in. Michigan reads this in cut, makes a good break. Better play, though, by Rasheed Ward. Brandon Harrison got a hand on it, tipped it up. First down, Northwestern. Bichet, a little shovel pass. Not a whole lot there for Dunsmore. Sean Crable made the tackle. That's uh, Trent Dunsmore, true freshman out of Lenexa, Kansas. He and Josh Rooks, another what they call super back or fullback type, are the only two true freshmen playing today for Northwestern. Now, on the other hand, Michigan is playing 12 two true freshmen this season. And they're getting battle tested. Conte going the other way. 
Tried to follow the block of Dylan Theory and got what he could. A gain of about four, maybe five yards. This is where Michigan has to get off the field. Third and short. Their defensive front. You want to see those guys create penetration, get on the other side of the ball. And you see Crable's trying to fire up his guys. It's amazing watching the tape on them this week right, against Penn State. They were possessed. I mean, the defense had, they were playing with a chip. Michigan guys flying around. They want to build up that momentum. Third and two. Pache, Conte, inside the Michigan 45. With a 43 yard line, first down, Northwestern back to Dave in the studio. Back up by Chris Wildcats looking good, Wayne, as is Illinois against Penn State. Juice Williams to Aurelius Ben. Look at the freshman who brought a kickback for a touchdown early, fighting his way into the end zone. 21 10, a line on. Now that's a connection we're going to hear a lot of over the next several years. Aurelius Ben from Juice Williams. Conte. It's about two right here. Running right at the Michigan defense. Jamison in on the stop for the Wolverines. You were mentioning last week, and I, we watched the same tape, and I agree with you. Michigan came out flying in that Penn State game. Knew they had to, to win, even at home. How hard is it to get that kind of an effort two weeks in a row? Well, I think initially they came out here pretty fired up, but Northwestern's had some success with their spread attack. It can be frustrating, particularly to the linebacking core. It, Northwestern's right now dictating to Michigan instead of the other way around. That's Conte in motion to the top of your screen. Bechet drills it on a quick move, and Dunsmore, did he make the catch? Yes, he did. Drake Dunsmore, whose dad played tight end for the Chicago Bears back in the early 80s on the reception, and Jamar Adams had the coverage. Let's take a look at it. You got the super back making a super play. Did he catch it? He did a five on the play. Take a look at it from this angle. Third and two, Northwestern on the Michigan. Got a hand under. That's real close. It's like it hit the ground. That's close call. And they're going to review it. They should. Previous play. And again, the replay official here is Gene Carabine. And Steve Payman is the official you're hearing from down on the field. Looks like right there, the ball is on the ground. Hmm. So get that hand under it, though, Chris. That's the thing. And is there enough video evidence to overturn this? Close call. Good camera angle right here. Oh, that's a great picture. Of great it. picture. You see it right there, a little red for you. I think he's got that hand under the ball, Chris. He may let this one stand. But you see, you got a safety on the super back. That's a better matchup than a wide receiver on a safety. And you can just tell Michigan's linebackers, they're having to play in space a lot today. And we talked to Coach Carr. He said, we can't let the ball get outside. Northwestern's completing a lot of passes outside. Yeah, outside. And, and the running game has been coming right at them between the tackles, at least starting there, Chris. The other thing about this, OK, who has success against spread offenses? And, and you, you take a look at they're usually under you and I were talking undersized defense a lot of quick guys in defense well, Michigan has good athletic ability on its defense no question about it but they've got guys that are size athletes more than they are small and quick you're exactly right you know historically the linebackers for Michigan are big thick heavy footed linebackers they're not undersized they don't flow to the ball as well so they have a tougher time playing against a spread attack and, and where the spread really attacks is those linebackers that second level it forces that second level to cover right absolutely you saw it last night with University of South Florida against West Virginia again going up against the spread attack they had better success because they had smaller people on defense guys that can run much faster Lloyd Carr and knowing his team's in a dogfight here it's funny we asked him we said well what you know against the spread team you guys gave up 73 points what do you got to do he said it's very simple we got to keep the ball inside the ruling on the field is reversed. The pass is incomplete. Mm. You know, you could probably see that. And you, you were mentioning that you kind of thought he trapped it on the ground. I thought he got the hand underneath it, but they had enough evidence to overturn the call. What do you think? Right 
there. I think the ball's on the ground. I think you're right. Yep. That's what replay does. It's supposed to correct that kind of a call. And that's a tough call to make on the field when it's happening live. Northwestern on the on the Michigan 42-yard line. Steve wants to add a few more seconds to that clock. So he got a few more seconds added. Give some props to Bechet. Went for 120 so far. Making good decisions with the ball. Seems to be very comfortable in the pocket. Facing third and eight. Threw off the back foot. Peterman latches on. But Harrison, the nickel back, makes the tackle short of the first down. Gain of about six, maybe seven on that play. Well, that was a good play by the nickel back, because that time it was a choice route by Peterman, meaning he can go either way on the defensive back. Nice job in space to wrap him up and get him on the ground. Make it fourth down from Northwestern. Will Johnson applying the pressure there. And now instead of trying a field goal, they bring on Stefan Demos for the punt. Demos has played seven inside the 20 coming into today's game. That's what he'll try to do here in Michigan deep. Interesting formation. Got a little bit too much on it. Hit the wedge, should have hit the 60 degree wedge. 13 7 Wildcats, just over nine minutes to go. First half in Evanston. Robbie. Michigan trailing by six, takes over offensively. Yield guard, defensive player of the week, brought to you by Monsanto. And he is Michigan's Jamar Adams, co Big Ten defensive player of the week. Eight tackles. Five pass breakups against Penn State. Preseason watch list for the Thorpe Award. And Jamar Adams, one of the more impressive safeties in the Big Ten. Mallet continues at quarterback again. If you join us late, Chad Henney played the first series. Mike Hart has drawn a crowd whenever he's touched the football. Gets about four here. Well, prior to that, Kerry Hart only had 21 yards rushing on eight carries, so Northwestern's doing a good job of pinning him down. Look for play action pass here coming up soon by Michigan. Second down and six. Hart running left, and it's stacked up pretty well. Mike Hart able to spill across the 25 to the 26. Malcolm Harrington was there, among others, for Northwestern. It's never one that brings down Mike Hart. And again, they run primarily off the left side of that offensive line. Big number 77, Jake Long, and 57, Adam Kraus. Face masking going on there by Harrington. Got in on that tackle. Good penetration, though. Penetration by the D-line kills running plays. Third down, Michigan, about four. Broke it up incomplete. Intended for Arrington, the favored third down receiver. David Orduba was in on that play. Well, this play was one in practice because he's sitting on this route here. They saw that before and they were prepared for it. Great job by the coaches of Northwestern. Orduba coming in and making a play. Cadella was also there. Another high floater of a punt. No fair catch. Rasheed Ward brought down near the 40 yard line. Dara McIntosh is down near the Michigan bench. Dara, what's the atmosphere like down there? Well, it's certainly not as joyous as it was last week for the Michigan Wolverines. As a matter of fact, after a few series, after Omar scored that touchdown, Ron English lit into his defense and just said, we've got to tackle, 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 tackle. He said it about five times. He stood up. He yelled. He says, you guys are not giving your all. He says, we don't want them to pass. We want them to run. We don't want any more passes. We want them to run. Get out there and do your job. So this atmosphere behind Michigan is not happy at all. Guys. Sounds a little tense, Dara. You're right. Bechet. Oh, nice adjustment. Oh, what a beautiful move that was by Ross Lane Bechet's to beat Morgan Trent down the sidelines. But a great adjustment with the ball in the air. 
And a pickup of yardage to the 34-yard line of Michigan. Absolutely, Wayne. This is what they call a fade stop. And a fade stop, you'll see it up top here, is you really want to throw that football on the back shoulder. It's hard for the defensive back to recover. Excellent job. Good ball placement by Bichette. Way to haul it in by Ross Lane. 26 yards downfield. First down for Northwestern. Conte. This time the Wolverines cut him off at the pass. Mid portion of that Michigan Conte defense was there. Carrier. Taylor with the safety Adams blitzing in. And dare a hit on Martin it. Coach Thomas. English is frustrated with his team defensively because they're Martin. letting Northwestern Taylor. dictate. Taylor. Northwestern's Taylor. passing successfully, which opens up the run Martin. attack Martin. as well. No this play. team right now looks a little Second flat on the defensive end. They need to create a spark. On a Michigan 34. Second and 10. Bichet on his own. Got by Chris Graham. Lunges inside the 30. Close to the Michigan 32-yard line. On a gain of about seven yards. Well, this is just a read option. He reads the play. Doesn't want to go with the dive. Pulls it in. But again, you got to tackle guys in space. That's what Coach English is getting frustrated and why Michigan's linebackers are getting frustrated. They're having a tough time tackling guys in space. When you play against a spread attack, a two-yard play can become a six-yard play if you cannot tackle in space. And again, as we talked earlier, Bache is not what you would call a foot athlete, not like Zach Kustak or Brett Bazinet, two great quarterbacks here in recent times running the spread. Third down. Bache intercepted. Morgan Trent on a pass to Ted Ross Lane. And Michigan takes over at the Wolverine 23. That was an outstanding play by the left quarterback, Morgan Trent. Because this is a quick slant route. He's playing man-to-man -man coverage, hard to defend. Watch him jump inside. And he just beats the receiver to the route. And Bechet knows it. I mean, that was saran wrap coverage, nothing there. Excellent play by Morgan Trent. And Chris, that pass is thrown by the quarterback on timing almost before the receiver makes his break, right? Absolutely, and you like to see it low and away. That time it was way too high, but it was a good read and a good play by Morgan Trent. Take a look at these numbers. My goodness. We have just over six minutes to go, first half. Mike Hart, little stop and go. And again, Northwestern gets population to the Michigan running back. And you wonder if a play like that defensively by Trent will incite the offense of Michigan, get Hart going. You can see it in his eyes. He wants to continue to pound the football. He's waiting for his next big play. Mike Hart came in just 139 yards away from the Michigan all-time rushing record. Trying to pass Anthony Thomas. Second down. Now. Long throw, first down. Arrington tiptoeing out of bounds at the Michigan 47-yard line. Under the coverage of McManus and Davy. And Wayne, this is what this big kid's going to give you. This is about as long a throw as you can make on a football field. Look at this outcut. And this ball is thrown with zip. Watch how quickly it gets there. I mean, Mallet has an unbelievable arm. Good job putting the ball right on the numbers of Arrington. Talking to everybody from Chad Henney all the way up to the head coach Lloyd Carr, this kid is going to be the next great. Michigan quarterback. He has all the tools. He does. All the measurables, and he's smart. He makes good decisions. Going deep. Manningham is there. And the ball sails out of bounds. One official had incomplete. The other came up the line and marks it as a completion of the 32-yard line. It appeared he got a foot inbounds, and that's all you need on Saturday. It looks like he got it done, and this is what Manningham wants to do. Run that fade route. You see he hauls it in. He's got a foot there. Michigan up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Replay will review. It's been a busy day so far for Gene Carabine, the replay official here. He is getting his workout in. You know, Chris, on that play, it looked like the, the official who was trailing the play marked no good, and the official coming up the line with a good view of it right there, the official in your screen right there, he was calling it a catch all the way. Well, you'll see it's very close. Difficult to tell from that angle, but it looks like he has that foot in right there. And then, Chris, the key is does he have possession when before that second, before that, uh, with that foot down to the ground? That's exactly key. right. Does he have possession? 
It didn't look to us like he was juggling it, but we didn't have the best look at it up here either. Fade route, he gets on top of McManus. This ball sailing on him a bit. Can't tell. Here it is. We should be able to tell right here. The foot is down. There it is, the left foot. There's the ball. Yeah, possession. That's a yeah, possession. Looks like a catch to me. Yeah. Looked like a good call on the field. 31 yard pass play. Will it stand? We'll see. Michigan's one of those teams that you know it's only a matter of time that they're going to try and make a quick strike down the field. You've been talking about it that they would get the ball down the field and might have done it a little earlier with the senior Henny at the helm, but getting the freshman going the out throw to Arrington in the previous play, then this one down the other side to Manningham. The freshman beginning to expand the field. After review, the play stands as called. That's the right call. Yeah, good call by officials. They're on it. We played Booth and run on top of it. Michigan trailing by six, just over five minutes ago, second quarter. And the Wolverines at the Northwestern 32 yard line. First and 10, Michigan on the Northwestern 32 yard line. Ryan Mallet out of Texarkana, Texas. First down. Fumble the snap. Manningham gets about seven or eight yards. Third week in a row that Mallet has dropped a snap from the left-handed center, Justin Boren, left-handed snapper. But he was able to recover in this one. Well, this is just a bubble screen here. You see Manningham up top in the slot. You'd like to see the pressure get there. He fumbled the snap. But I like what Michigan's done today. They worked the ball to Manningham. They've gotten him involved early. And he continues to execute. Second and three. Hart. Try to cut it back. Northwestern very disciplined in its control of the gaps defensively up front. And Hart has not been able to cut it back as he would like. Well, you're right, Wayne. We talked about it yesterday to Adam Cadella, the linebacker of Northwestern. And he said, today we have to have gap integrity meaning that you can't flow too fast to the football. You have to be disciplined with your reads because Mike Hart loves to cut the football back. Third down, Michigan. Third and five. Arrington in motion. Mallet looking that way. Mallet trying to buy some time. Gets it away. Arrington, first down. Just outside the 16 yard line of Northwestern. Brad Phillips had the coverage. Corey Wilton was all over the quarterback. The strength of the 6'7 at 252 pound quarterback. Oh, clearly. When you're this big and physical, you have a defensive lineman that you're able to shrug off and still put the ball on a rope. Again, finding his favorite target. You'll see the pocket collapse. He's athletic enough to feel it and to slide outside and deliver a strike. Mm, good play by the young quarterback, and he's juiced up. Better believe he likes it. 6'7, 252, and Wooten is 6'7, about 280, so he's not that much bigger than the quarterback. A low throw here. Did he trap it? They're saying incomplete. They're, they're keeping Northwestern off balance. You're seeing throws to the right, throws to the left, a quick flurry, bubble screens, working the outcut. Good job, Mike DeBoard, offensive coordinator, mixing up the play selection. We saw Chad Henney and Nick Sheridan, two quarterbacks on the sidelines, signaling the plays. One's right, the other's wrong. <laughs> Mallet, lots of time. Through the hands of his intended receiver, incomplete. The tight end, Carson Butler. Right through his hands, Sherrick McManus came up from behind defensively. I don't really like this play call. I mean, that time you got a tight end that's flexed outside, working against a very good corner from Northwestern. I don't think that's the advantage you want. Clearly, he should have caught the ball, but I don't like the play call. I'd rather you throw it inside to one of your receivers who put their hands on the balls earlier today. Michigan only one of six on third down conversions. Third and ten. They've got a blitz on. Mallet's going to keep it. Mallet brought down short of the first down, but did get to the Northwestern 10. John Gill, the defensive lineman, recovered to meet him on the play. 
when you can force Mallet to have to move his feet and to scramble defensively for Northwestern, it's really a win because he doesn't move that well. See, he has space. But watch how quickly John Gill closes. That's a D lineman flying to the football. Northwestern got exactly what they wanted that time. Line of scrimmage, the nine yard line of Northwestern. It is fourth down Michigan, and there's some debate here as to whether the Wolverines want to go for it. It's fourth down and again almost three yards to go. And a timeout taken by Michigan. Just kick the field goal here. My opinion. If you don't kick the field goal here, you are saying to that defense, we don't respect you and we're going to motor this thing in on fourth and three. No question. We're going to do it at your house too. I think Coach Carr's got to put those points on the board. They miss out here. It's a momentum killer. We want to welcome viewers watching the Big Ten Network today on RCN and Wide Open West Systems. We hope all of you watching the Big Ten Network for the first time today in Chicago and the rest of Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Pennsylvania enjoy today's games. Glad to have you all on board. RCN and Wide Open West. Wayne Larby, Chris Martin, Dara McIntosh. Fourth down. And it's a healthy three yards to go for Michigan here. At the Northwestern nine yard line, Michigan trailing 13 to 7. And they're sending the field goal unit on. Called by Coach Carr, as we said, if they missed out here, momentum could be shot. The other thing is Coach Carr knows full well, Jason Gingell has struggled. Just three of seven of the field goal department coming into this afternoon's game. Mesco, the punter, will hold. 26 yard field goal attempt. No good. Maybe that's why he had the long contemplation on whether to go for it. Jim Gell has shown in the past that he will push it just like he did there. Wide right. Good snap, good hole. He just misdirects this thing. Coach Carr on the sidelines. One thing he said to us earlier this week, we have got to get the field goal situation fixed. We've got to get that thing turned around. He said he, Jason Gingell is a good kicker. He had two blocks in the opening game, hit the uprights and another uh, couple of shots. Can't leave points on the field. No. Nope. Conte, and they root him out. Loss of two. Sean Crable. In on that play, it was number two, yeah, one Sean. of the leaders of this defense, fifth year senior out of Massillon, Ohio. Oh, he's special now. He leads the Big Ten and tackles for loss, so you know he gets on the other side of the ball. And he's one of those hybrid type guys, Wayne. He can play with his hand on the ground, he can play in space, and when he hits you, you go to the ground. Well, you know, we talked about again, Michigan on fourth and three there, the nine yard line of Northwestern. And if they went for it, Maybe that sends a message to the Northwestern defense. We don't respect you. But the other factor, Crable jumping offside. Penalty markers down. The other factor, as we saw just a moment ago, shaky field goal situation. Even from 26 yards, you figure that's a chip shot. Offside defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Second down. Just as I hyped up Crable, it's a little anxious coming off the edge that time. But, you know, again, you see... When you get into conference play situation like that, Lloyd knows that as well as anybody. Uh, that field goal could make the difference in a ball game down the stretch, and, and uh, Michigan's really got to think about it now. Sure. You know, I mean, you might have to go for it in situations you normally wouldn't. They empty the shotgun for Bechet. Good throw, good catch. Ross Lane, first down, 31 yard line. Eight yard pickup, Brandon Harrison. Tough play to cover. Well, and for Michigan, they got a better matchup here. You got Harrison, who's a nickelback, working against a receiver instead of the linebacker, but you can't let Lane get inside. It's an easy throw for the quarterback. Good job of executing. Two minute offense, two timeouts left for each side here. Bechet taking a shot deep. Thompson caught it. And he's got it. First down inside the Michigan 45 on the 42 yard line. Donovan Warren, the man they beat. But that coverage was pretty darn good. Great throw, great catch. Yeah, it was a, it was a great coverage, even better catch. So look at the adjustment. 
and the wherewithal to get the foot down, dot the eye. Gain of 27 on the play. First Thompson, and beautiful catch. On the Michigan 42 yard line. 26 yard play. Frustration continuing to boil over for Michigan and Coach Carr. Timeout taken by Michigan is the preliminary indication. Timeout. A minute 23 to go in the half. Michigan down to one timeout remaining. Northwestern has two. There's a correction for the Muslim officials timeout. Michigan is challenging the ruling on the field that it was a catch inbound. Michigan challenge. Why not? The refs have gotten so much work at it today, but Chris, don't you want to save that for the second half? Usually, I mean, you only get one, whether you're right or wrong. Well, Eloy Cars, you can tell right there in his body language that he is just completely becoming unglued with his team and their failure to make plays. Tim Thompson, nice catch. Give Northwestern credit, though. They spread the ball out pretty well. I mean, you see Kim Thompson coming in, making a catch. Peterman's made a couple grabs. Of course, Rasheed Ward with the big hit earlier. Ross Lane's been busy today. So they're spreading the ball out. They're not concentrating on one receiver, making Michigan's challenge even greater. Another look at it. Yeah, he's it. This is the young cornerback, Donovan Warren, who, in talking to the coaches, they light up. When they mention this kid, he plays with Moxie. He's a young guy, but he has some guts. But you expect Northwestern to make him prove himself today. True freshman out of uh, Long Beach, California. Just a great throw, and then Thompson able to gather it in. He's in play. You know, we were talking to Garrett McGee, the offensive coordinator of Northwestern, and kind of hinting at, well, you're going to go with the freshman, of course, aren't you? I and mean, Morgan Trent's a senior out there, so you're going to go to, after the freshman. He says, Hey, listen, I tried to recruit that freshman. <laughs> I know all about that kid. He's a pretty good player. Yeah, <laughs> so. he went under the hood. He knows that, uh, that Donovan can play football, but he, again, you expect Northwestern to go after him and make him step up and make the play. Michigan's got to come out here and play their football, though. They need to bring that swagger back. They had some momentum rolling. Look at those guys. That's when you get in the huddle and say, Roll on the field stand. And again, fourth replay, Chris, and they're right again. As they should. With that second and out. You know, Chris, we've talked so much about Michigan and coming off the big win over Penn State. How about Northwestern trying to rebound from 58 to 7 on the wrong side at Ohio State? A pretty good effort here. Well, the Wildcats have responded. And we talked to Coach Fitzgerald, and that's exactly what he said. He, they have to respond. They said they had a great week of practice. They felt very confident. And I talked to the strength coach earlier, Larry Lodge, he said when they got off the bus today, they had that look in their eye. Wanted the screen to Dunsmore. Didn't have the angle to make that throw. Second and 10 at the Michigan 42-yard line for Northwestern again. Two timeouts remaining for Northwestern, and Michigan now down to one. Second and 10, Northwestern on and the Michigan of note also, yard line. Michigan has used its coach's challenge. As in space, Lloyd Carr looking to see who's going to make the next big play for his defense. Four wide here. Second and ten. Bichette. Peterman. Close to the first down. Just short, it appears, at the 32-yard line gain of nine. Brandon Harrison made the stop. And you just wonder that after facing two traditional types of offenses, whether Michigan's fully prepared, they seem to have a tough time with the spacing, the alignment, and closing on Northwestern's interior receivers. Bichette basically threw that one away in the general direction of Kim Thompson. Sean Crable bearing down on the quarterback. Chris, I go back to what you said earlier. You know, the point we made is that when you look at Michigan defensively, they are built to stop the traditional high back, two back offenses. You know, they, they've got a little more trouble in space against these spread offenses. Even one today where the quarterback is not necessarily a foot athlete, although he's made some plays on with his feet here today. Well, they have big linebackers that are take on linebackers, meaning they'd rather be taken on the run play. 
tougher for them to get out and get in space. This is Omar Conte. First down to the 16-yard line of Michigan. Under a minute to go in this first half. 15-yard gain. Shea, nice read here. Good job feeling the pressure. Nice touch on the ball to Conte. Russian playing with a lot of confidence. And they messed up the handoff. But Shea wanted to hand it off to Conte. And uh, I'm not sure if he wanted to hand it off or pull it back, but they collided. And a loss of almost five yards on that play. Tim Jamison was there defensively for Michigan in a timeout taken by Northwestern. Second timeout by the Wildcats. The other thing is when you play against a spread, because you're in so much space and you're focused so much on making tackles and having good technique, it can tire you out as a defense and as an individual. I mean, these guys are covering a lot of ground. It's interesting to see these guys if they can hang in there. Lloyd Carr knew it would be tough. This week after Penn State, well, it's one thing to get up for Penn State. It's another thing to go on the road. You know that first road game, Chris, is, is always an issue. Coaches tell me all the time. You know that first road game, you're not quite sure how your kids are going to come out. This is Michigan's first road game, the fifth week of the season, second conference week. Well, and we talked to Coach Carr about that. He said that, hey, we still don't know what the identity of our team is. We're still figuring that out. He hoped to put that uh, period at the end of the sentence today. So far, he's still unsure. Northwestern eight plays 59 yards on this drive facing second and long. Bechet tight pocket. Ward the intended receiver pretty well covered by Donovan Warren. Third down and long coming up Northwestern 26 seconds left on the clock. Northwestern three of eight and third downs. Shea is good from the neck up. He makes good decisions. He's smart with the football. Yeah, he kind of threw that one away. Yeah, he didn't have anything. And, and with the spread, you got to make those decisions quickly. Shea on his own. Got a good block. Shea down inside the 10 to the 9. Brandon Engelman made the tackle. 12-yard run, and he's got a little wiggle to his game. Though. They're going to wind the clock, Chris, down to four seconds. Stop it. Bring the field goal unit on. Stark contrast, one kicking game to the other. Villarreal hit a 49-yard field goal earlier. Jason Jinjil missed a 26 yard chip shot in this second quarter. Talked about Piche and one of the things that his offensive coordinator said is that he's just seeing the field so clearly right now and you can tell he's confident in what they're doing. He's getting the ball to check downs. He's checking out of plays getting into the right situations for Northwestern a very confident quarterback. I got to ask you that last scamper there. Is that if they sort of designed that a little bit or not? Is that a run up pass option? That was a design call. I mean, you could tell right away he made a yeah. quick decision. He tucked it in. And he's got a little wiggle. I mean, he's, he's tough to bring down in space. I mean, he's not Bazinet and Kustak moving like that, but he does have some escapability about him. And he's a smart kid, as you pointed out. Here Real will try a 27 yard field goal. As time expires in this first half, the Northwestern Wildcats coming off a 58 to 7 loss in Columbus a week ago lead the Wolverines 16 to 7 at halftime. Let's go down to Darrell. Coach, you talked about how your team needed to get an early start and get on the board early. How is your team able to halt this Michigan offense? Well, what we're doing right now is executing the call, playing together as one heartbeat. That gives you an opportunity to stop the run when you swarm the way we're doing right now. It's a long football game. We've got a lot of adjustments to make. We left a lot of plays out there on the field, and uh, we'll get those fixed here at halftime. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you very much. Wayne. Thank you very much, Dara McIntosh. Big first half for Northwestern. They head to the locker room with the lead. Coming up, Dave Revson and the gang. The halftime show after these messages.
Big Ten football Saturday rolls on. The Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave Reps and Jerry DiNardo and Howard Griffith. Want to get you ready for some of the games coming up later today in the Big Ten. We have two of them to talk about. Michigan State and Wisconsin. That a battle of unbeatens in Madison. You can see that one on ABC. That's at 3.30. Then at 8 p.m. Both these times Eastern time. Ohio State battles Minnesota on ESPN2. Let's start off with that game between Michigan State and Wisconsin Howard and uh, an intriguing matchup of undefeated. You got Michigan State at the 4-0 start. Mark D'Antonio, that's the best start for any head coach in his first year at Michigan State. But again, going up against this Wisconsin team that has the longest winning streak in the country. You think Michigan State and D'Antonio can keep this thing going? I, I believe that they can. And when I look at this game, you're talking about two teams that both want to come out and run the football and play stout defense. But I think the difference for Michigan State will be their defensive line. I think they'll spend a lot of time in Wisconsin's backfield. You're talking about a team that has 41 tackles for loss. And of those 41, 20 of those are, are sacks. So that's an interesting matchup that there's going to be out there today. Yeah, I see it a little bit different. I see both of these teams taking steps in different directions. I see Wisconsin taking a step forward, Michigan State taking a step back. I believe the early wins on Wisconsin's schedule, especially Washington State and especially Iowa, give them the edge going into this game. They've been in tough games. They're more prepared for this tough game. Michigan State has done great things this year. They may be one of the most improved teams in the country, but I'm not sure the schedule has got them ready for this game today. It's tough, too, because you're Michigan State and you say, well, you know, before we get to conference play, we will have played Notre Dame. <laughs> So I mean, you're thinking, well, we're going to have a tough, we're going to have a tough game there. We'll we'll know what we're made of, but obviously, you, you don't anticipate as down a year as Notre Dame has had. Uh, what about Ohio State and Minnesota? I mean, this one is intriguing in that Tim Brewster, the Minnesota coach, basically flat out came out and said this week, we're not as good as they are. I look at the tape of these guys. This is a guy who spent a lot of time in the NFL. Perhaps some slight hyperbole here, but saying this is as good as an AFC West team. So if you publicly acknowledge that the opponent is far better than you are, Coach. And, and even if you don't acknowledge it publicly, you got to know it inside. How do you prepare your team? Well, the first thing I do is I go to my offensive players, and I say one of the reasons we implemented the spread attack on offense is we believe we can compete and beat anybody in this attack because it's a balanced attack. We can run the ball. We have option elements, and we also can throw the ball. And this is where it's going to help us when we're – Outman, when we have personnel problems, we can move the ball against anybody in the conference. Well, they'll be able to move it as long as they don't turn the ball over. And when you talk about this Ohio State defense, they're talking about a team that has nothing but speed on it, and that's going to be on full display. Although they're going to be facing a team that runs the spread offense, they have the speed at the linebacker position, D-line, and the safeties that really will be able to keep up with it. So it's going to be important if you're Minnesota to be able to not only control the ball, but hold on to the ball. Uh, it's an Ohio State team that has given up just 29 points through four games. It's the fewest they've allowed in their first four games of the year since 1973. And then on the other side, you have a Minnesota team giving up 38 and a half points per game. There's a slight difference. There's a little bit of a little bit of a gap. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> Big Ten football Saturday powered by Suzuki. It is the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. We got a lot more to come in a moment. Back at Northwestern, Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Dara McIntosh. The Wildcats looking to uh, pull an upset here at home, leading Michigan 16-7. Abato Villarreal with field goals of 27, 49, and 27 yards, and a 49-yard touchdown run by Omar Conte have the Wildcats on the lead. Meanwhile, Michigan running back Mike Hart, the All-America, on the verge of becoming Michigan's all-time leading rusher, just 30 yards on 12 carries in that first half, an average of 2.5 yards per pop, and a long gain of 11 yards. In the quarterback situation, Chad Henney played the first series, hit five of seven passes, including a touchdown, and we have not seen him since. Ryan Mallett, five of 11 passing for 67 yards. He's been sacked once. And again, it'll be interesting to see if Henny might come out and play for Michigan in the second half here this afternoon. The Northwestern Band performing on a beautiful late September afternoon in Evanston with the home forces, the purple leading the big blue of Michigan, 16 to 7 here at Northwestern. Let's head back to the studio and Dave Repson.
Continuing on here on Big Ten Football Saturday in the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave Revs and Jerry DiNardo and Howard Griffith. Big upset brewing potentially in Evanston. That's not the only place we've got potential upsets on what's been a wild first half of games so far throughout the Big Ten. Let's check it out. We'll start you off in Champaign, Penn State and Illinois. The last time Joe Pa's team was at Memorial Stadium two years ago, they scored 56 points in the first half. Little bit different story in this one. First quarter, Nittany Lions on top three. Nothing Aurelius Ben says not anymore. He doesn't literally say it. He says it with his actions. A 90-yard kickoff return. It's 7-3 fighting Illini. Now more from the Illini. 14-10 and Ben is just tough. He's an explosive player. He has really made a difference in their offense in a short time. 21 to 10 Illinois, it's 21-17 at the half. I think the story in this game is Juice Williams is particularly in third down, being able to convert third and long. He'll have to do it in the second half of this game as well. Mendenhall always keeps you in the game, 48 yards already. He has the other touchdown for Illinois, Notre Dame and Purdue. This is really the only one that has gone according to the script so far. Corey Sheets going for 20 yards for the Boilers. He had 100 in the first half. Sheets taking it in. It's 10-0 in favor of Purdue. Now second quarter, Curtis Painter, Dorian Bryant. They've done that before. 20 to nothing in favor of the Boilers. Painter's thrown for a buck 90. Also has been picked off for just the second time all year. I think Sheets rushing for 100 yards in the first half of the game is impressive. Well, Painter has to be able to, to correct the interception situation so he doesn't head down the wrong road. That's about all Purdue has to worry about as they are having their way with Notre Dame. Indiana and Iowa, this one has been a surprise early. Kellen Lewis, James Hardy, this is his fifth touchdown in three games against the Hawkeyes. 7-0 Indiana. And I'll tell you, when things are going your way, well, they're going your way. Second quarter, it's 14 to nothing. Josiah Sears fumbles the football, but look who picks it up. Kellen Lewis, the quarterback, and he is gone. 70 yards for the touchdown. And the flip, little unsportsmanlike to finish it off, but 21 0 Hoosier. You like the fact that your quarterback is always involved in the game, just not standing around watching the other guys do their job. Because he was hustling, he was able to pick that ball up and run it in for a touchdown. Goes down as return yards, not offensive yards. Either way, though, 21 0. Now, check this out. Now goes around, comes around. Jake Christensen tipped in the air, and Trey Strauss as time expires. In the first half, the Hawkeyes with a little momentum heading into the locker room. 21-7, though, they are down to IU. Now, we've known that Iowa has past game struggles, but only to have 61 yards in the first half, that's a problem. Well, this defense is starting to concern me, to say the least. Let's check out the game you're watching, Michigan and Northwestern. Chad Henney getting the start for the Wolverines. Been out with that injury. You see him wearing the brace. It's Mario Manningham here. And Manningham takes it in for the TD, 7-3 Michigan. Now, Henny did not play much in this first half. It's been mostly the freshman Ryan Mallett. Been mostly C.J. Bechet for Northwestern, but Omar Conte here finds a hole, and the Wildcats getting something done on the ground, even without Tyrell Sutton in their 49-yard touchdown. 10-3 Wildcats. They got three field goals in the first half. The Wildcats lead it 16-7 at the break. Well, I, the fact that Northwestern has rushed for 93 yards the first half, which for them is, is a lot of yards and a half of football, I think is impressive. But more impressive is their defense. I mean, not the numbers. Now, they, they've held Michigan to 150-something yards, but the way they're flying around the field is pretty impressive. Yeah, that's outstanding. But Bechet is truly the story. He puts you in situations, gives your team an opportunity to win, and he's doing it again. And now he has a rushing game to complement that. Better watch out. A real trademark of this team to a large extent under Randy Walker and it's carried over under Pat Fitzgerald is no matter how bad things get, they seem to bounce back. They just got humiliated two weeks in a row by Duke and Ohio State for playing a very impressive first half. See how it goes in the second half at Evanston. We'll see you after the game for the postgame report. You're watching the Big Ten Network. Halftime at Ryan Field in Evanston. The Northwestern Wildcats play on the lead 16 to 7 over the Michigan Wolverines. Hi everybody, Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Dara McIntosh is joining us on the sidelines. We'll hear from her a little bit later on. 
but a first half that was very impressive. These two teams coming off big games one way or the other. Michigan with a huge win over Penn State at home last week. Meanwhile, Northwestern a huge loss at Ohio State, and the Wildcats have come out much the better. Well, they came out inspired. They moved the ball right down the field earlier, capping it off with a field goal. Michigan struck back, though, getting the ball to Manningham out on one on one coverage, getting to the end zone. See them celebrating, but then Northwestern going toe to toe today. Omar Conte saying he's that next big play guy, able to stretch this one out, getting to the end zone. Excellent shiftiness and cutting back, finds the paint. And then Northwestern again, right before half, putting this one right down the heart. Valario, Northwestern coming out inspired today. And one more time for good measure. These guys have. Got it cranked up today, Wayne. Let's take a look at the Polaris first half stats, and you're going to see a lot of offense on the side of Northwestern. But take a look at what they've been able to do defensively, especially against Michigan's run game. Well, they've made Michigan heartless. They've taken Mike Hart out of the game. He's rushed for 30 yards. He can't get out on the perimeter. They're keeping him boxed in, so they're getting exactly what they want defensively, taking Hart out of the game, not giving up the explosive plays like we talked about in the open. So right now, they're doing exactly what they wanted to do. Meanwhile, Northwestern has possessed the football over three minutes longer than Michigan in the first half. Second half is coming up. The Wolverines trailing on the road, 16 to seven, will be back. Big 10 Network Football is brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. By Liberty Mutual Coach of the Year. Vote now at coachoftheyear.com. And by Yield Guard BT Triple, the yield protection system. Ryan Field, Evanston, Illinois, on the shores of Lake Michigan. Wayne Larrabee, along with Chris Martin, Dara McIntosh down to the sidelines. Michigan will accept the football to start the third quarter. And uh, we'll see what adjustments were made at halftime by both sides. And you, you know that Lloyd Carr was busy. He's busy giving his guys an earful. Offensively, defensively. They've been sleepwalking a bit. See if they can come out here and get it started out of the shoot. And if you're Northwestern, you know you're going to take a big shot from Michigan in the second half. There's no doubt about that. Twin safeties back deep to receive. and Miner back deep. Demos the kickoff to Miner, about two yards deep to the 5-10. Short side 15-20, angled out of bounds. Good hit at the 22-yard line. Ben Rotra made the hit. Michigan's got to come out, Wayne, and establish that running game. Get Mike Hart loose. Get him out on the perimeter. Interesting to see if they're going to go back behind Jake Long. All-American, all-everything left tackle. That guy's got to be a factor. The other, Michigan's going to get back in this game. The other question at halftime was how soon would they go back to Chad Henney? As soon as right now, the start of the, the third quarter. And he played only the opening series and let Michigan do a quick touchdown. Manningham. Out of bounds across the 35 near the 37 yard line of Michigan. It is a gain of 14 yards. In the first half, Chad Henney, 5 of 7, 48 yards at a touchdown. Ryan Mallett, 5 of 11 passing. He was very efficient in that first drive. Fluid, didn't look like he was having any mobility problems with his knee. See if he can keep up that efficiency. First and ten. Manningham in motion. Penny. Manningham. First down, close to the midfield marker. He's shut back near the 48 yard line, a gain of about 11 yards. You know, Wayne, for Northwestern's defense, it really doesn't matter which quarterbacks in, particularly, because these guys are cut from the same cloth. They're big physical guys that have strong arms, can make all the throws, and they're going to stand tall in the pocket. Except that one has a lot more experience than the other. This one has a lot of experience. He's a senior. No question, but in terms of making the reads and running the offense for Northwestern's defense, it's very similar. Wolverines knocking on the Wildcats' territorial door. Blitz coming. Henny steps up against it, takes a shot deep down the field. 
Mike McManus and Manningham battle for it, and it's incomplete. A great battle. Eric McManus and Mario Manningham. First off, you get good pressure up front by Northwestern, and this is what Michigan wants to do. Air it out, throw the ball down the field, get it all back. This is outstanding coverage, though, by Sherrick McManus, almost pulling it in. That time, Manningham ran an out-and-up route. McManus didn't bite. Good job of high-pointing the football and keeping it away from Super Mario. Second and 10, Michigan, 49-yard line, Wolverine territory. Mike Hart, big hole, left side. Would not go down on the shirt tackle and gets about nine yards inside Northwestern territory in the 47-yard line. The thing that I love about Mike Hart is you will not arm tackle him. You see a great example of it right here. You can't hold on to his jersey. No, he's too strong. Keeps his legs going. You better get other guys to the ball to help get him on the ground. Malcolm Arrington did a good job of playing off his block, but couldn't get any more than a handful of shirt off of Mike Hart. And now it's third and short, Michigan. Andros, the fullback. Mike Hart going that way. Penalty flags down. Ball start for the snap. Ball start off number 77. That's a five yard penalty. It remains third down. Jake Long getting a quick start there. Fourth penalty on Michigan. It's been interesting though. Michigan's come out firing on all cylinders and they're running behind Jake Long. And then they started the game running to the right, which is a bit of an anomaly the for them. Probably the trying to out game plan Northwestern, but they're going back to their bread and butter and what they do best. And that's follow number 77, Jake Long. Michigan 2 of 8 on third downs. Massey in motion. Henny. Matthews. First down, Michigan. 38-yard line of Northwestern. Deontay Battle made the stop. Good job of spreading Northwestern out, giving them a little dose of their own medicine and just working an underneath cut here to Matthews, working against the linebacker. Got a cornerback sitting there waiting for him in the hole. Good delivery by Henny. Way to move the sticks. Gain of a little bit more than nine yards. Michigan continues on the opening drive of the third quarter. Mike Hart. And again, drew quite a crowd. Quinton Davey coming in from the strong side linebacker spot, got a hand on him, and that slowed him up, and then the big guys up front. Yeah, they rushed, they rushed Davey off the edge, Wayne, to get some heat in the backfield. Northwestern trying to be sure that, it, that uh, Mike Hart can't cut the ball back. Again, utilizing their gap integrity. They've done a great job of eliminating the cutback primarily in this game. Manningham wide to the top of your screen. Kenny broke it up incomplete. That was linebacker coverage that time on Manningham. It was pretty good coverage by Quentin Davey. Well, good Manningham. coverage and good read. He just sniffs this out right away. I mean, he's all over this outcut. Couldn't have played it better. Uses that inside arm or the long arm, as we call it. Nice play by that redshirt freshman, Quentin Davey. Michigan facing another third down on this opening drive of the second half. Chad Henney, the senior, back in a quarterback. Slot at the top of the screen. Massey in motion to the bottom. Blitz coming. They picked it up well. Pass off the mark, incomplete. Matthews, the intended receiver. They did a zone blitz, and that was big John Gill downfield in space of the wide receiver. And he looked like a defensive back back there running around covering. How about that well, for athleticism? I would say he looked like a defensive back. <laughs> he was chasing in pursuit. But I think the thing to note there, Wayne, is that Northwestern's given Michigan a lot to think about. A yes. lot of different looks. They're throwing a variety of blitz plays, dropping different guys in coverage. And he's getting a lot of looks to anticipate. Zoltan Mesko in confirmation once again hangs this one high. A fair catch signal is made and the catch is completed by Rashid Ward just short of the nine yard line of Northwestern. First salvo handled by the Wildcats from Michigan to start the third quarter. Northwestern when we come back. In. Northwestern leading 16 to 7 much to the concern of those fans here at 
Ryan Field from Michigan. The Cargill passing combinations last week against Penn State. Ryan Mallett found Mario Manningham six times for 61 yards in the victory over Penn State. Penn State's got their hands full down in Champaign today with the uh, fighting Illini. Worst field position to start a drive for Northwestern. Omar Conte bounces to the outside. Oh, and he was a shoestring tackle away from gaining a whole lot more than 10 yards. Pickup of 11 to the 20 yard line. OB Eze made go, the top tackle. Wayne, they go again to that read option, but a nice cut. Way to find the lane by Conte, and he's running with toughness. He's not allowing one guy to bring him down. Good bounce play, finding the, the perimeter. He came into today's game with just 49 net yards and 24 rushing attempts. He got twice that on a touchdown run in the first half. And again, nice hole, good cut by Conte. As again, they run between the tackles against this Michigan defense that is concentrating, as you mentioned, Chris, so much on the outside against the spread that there might be some lanes inside. And Northwestern has done some business in between the tackles. Absolutely. A lot of times you can win plays by alignment, just spacing people out. There are creases there, and right now Northwestern's exploiting it. And they're going without a huddle. Second down. Conte, 11 carries, 89 rushing yards. Option. Here comes Conte running downhill. Got the first down. Engelman makes the tackle. First and 10 for the Northwestern Wildcats and a gain of about 10 yards. Again, nice play call by Coach McGee running an option. Good read by Bechet. He felt the defensive end collapsing, so he pitches it out to Conte. Good call, good execution. Northwestern changes up on personnel. Bechet calling the play at the line. Roberson in at the running back spot next to Bechet. Blitz coming. Again, the pitch. Roberson trying to get around the end. They went to that well. Brandon <laughs> Roberson, the ball yeah. After the uh, last success they had, Chris Graham responding for Michigan. He was on it all the way. And that time, good play call by Back Coach Ron English of Michigan. Graham. That time, he's manufacturing pressure. He's bringing the blitz. Good job getting Graham out in space. One on the play, second and 11 North. I expect road, Michigan to continue to bring the heat on Bechet. Bechet looks too comfortable back there in the pocket. He's scanning the field, getting exactly what he wants. They need to make him unnerved back there, bring the fire. Loss of two on the previous play, second and 12. Oh, nice hole there. Roberson, first down on the cross. The 40 to the 45 yard line of Northwestern on a gain of 12 yards. Engelman made the stop along with Donovan Warren. Give him a gain of 14 on that play. And really, with Northwestern, it's been running back by committee. We saw what Conte's done. Brandon Roberson coming in, doing his thing, running hard, moving the sticks. First down, Northwestern. This is their opening possession offensively of the third quarter. Bechet. Better get rid of it and was able to throw it out of play. Late pressure Bechet's coming from Adam complete. Patterson, a defensive end. But Bechet initially had plenty of time. Pass protection's been pretty sound for Northwestern here today, to say the least. Yeah, they've been holding up, giving Bechet the time he needs to execute. That time, though, good coverage down the field by Michigan. The young defensive back, Donovan Warren, was all over Kim Thompson that play. Second and ten. Football just across the 45 of Northwestern. Conte rejoins Bechet in the backfield. Bechet under pressure immediately. And he escapes out of bounds. CJ lost a couple of yards back to the 43-yard line. Ronaldo Seguis forced him out. See, this isn't what he does not want to do, run right away. I mean, he, he good job of feeling the pressure. But he's not looking to run right away. He's more of a guy that he needs to see the lane the develop the and then take advantage of it. That the time, Michigan did a nice Western. job flushing him out of the pocket. On their own 43 Northwestern, three of nine, and third down conversions. And there's a look at the numbers posted by Bechet. Facing third and 12. Over the middle, turned around as receiver incomplete. And he the had him wide open. Oh, it was a lot of carpet there. Good job on the crossing route. Shanks was wide open. The ball was a little bit behind him, though. Intended for Nathan like to see Shanks. Bechet. He's got the time. He throws it off his back foot. Maybe that was the problem. Yeah. 
Doesn't set up. A missed opportunity there by the Cats. And punt formation. Shea on the sidelines. Demos in punt formation. We've been trying directional kicking all day, and this one backs up near the 23-yard line out of bounds. It'll be first down for Michigan from there. Each side has had one offensive possession here in the third. Northwestern still leading 16 to 7. You're watching the Big Ten Network. Along with Dara McIntosh and Chris Martin, Wayne Larravee, let's revisit the Northwestern keys to the game brought to you by Suzuki, Chris. Well, we talked about it earlier when we said they had to be physical, and they did just that, particularly on the interior line play on both sides of the ball. They've been getting penetration, and that's what's been helping them so far. For Michigan? For Michigan, this is what it's been all about, is boxing up the spread, and they've had a tough time doing that against Northwestern. And he remains in at quarterback. Hart trying to go wide, looking to cut it back, and now he's got some running room. Hit from behind, and then driven down. Boy, the pursuit relentless. And over to make the tackle, Deontay Battle, but it was Phillips, the safety, who came in there. Brad Phillips, it kind of blew up that play. Well, and this is where Mike Hart can really hurt you. It's his ability to find the cutback and then to hit it. I mean, that time, Northwestern was flowing to the football. He's shifty enough that he can cut it back against the grain and get out the back door. Mike Hart hasn't been able to break anything of significance yet today. He had a two on the previous play. Henny got a man open. Mario Manningham wide open. It looked like they had Quentin Davey on him on coverage. And Sherrick McManus playing almost like a safety. The quarterback almost playing like a safety over the top. But what's most intriguing, Wayne, is again, Henny now showing you how strong his arm is. Again, these are long throws. Look how quickly the yeah. ball gets there with zip. We saw it earlier with Mallet on the outcut by Manningham. You see it there again with Henny. They have arm strength. They can make all the throws, particularly down the field. 11-yard gain to a first down. Empty backfield. Manningham in motion, a little bubble screen. Manningham able to hesitate, picked up a block, and gets across the 40 before being decked by Adam Cadella, who picked him up and threw him down. As it is, a pickup of about six yards. Talked to Cadella yesterday, and he's really the heart and soul of the defense. You know, you'll see him flowing to the football. He has a good football IQ. He knows where the ball is going, and he's a good tackler in space. Craig Matthews, nice block, really sustained on the corner there and almost sprung. Manningham for a big play. Second down and about four. Hart. Picking his way. What a nice run by Mike Hart. Inside the 50, down to the 41 yard line of Northwestern. Deontay Battle brought him down. Biggest run of the day for Mike Hart, 17 yards. Wayne, you see three great things here. His ability to make people miss, to cut it back. But watch him switch the ball here. Smart football by Mike Hart and the strength to stiff arm the cornerback coming up. Again, nice cut back there. Here's the vision. Now watch him switch the ball. He's thinking on the move and watch him finish the run. Deontay Battle goes down to the ground quickly. You can count the number of hand, number of times he's fumbled on his hand, on one hand in his entire career. Unbelievable. Arrington wide open. Inside the 20 to the 16-yard line of Northwestern. Battle and McPherson respond. A strike thrown by Chad Henney. And Michigan picks up 24. That's just pitch and catch. That's too easy. See, Arrington's running naked. There was nobody by him. Good job of finding him. Henny holding off the safety and then coming back to Arrington delivering a strike. First down, Michigan roaring on this drive. Hart met in the hole and driven down by Mike Denard, the outside linebacker, the weak side linebacker. Pick up of a couple of yards. Down, Wayne. Looks like Mike Massey down on, on the field. For is Mike Massey. And he needs some attention. This has been a hard hitting game. The one thing that impressed everyone up here in the press box at halftime was uh, the way Northwestern came out and hit this afternoon. They knew they'd have to be physical with Michigan. 
and they've been so far. We've got a break. We'll be back after these messages. 16 to 7 Wildcats. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Dara McIntosh back in Evanston. Michigan second down. They faked a heart and they come the other way. Northwestern stayed with the play pretty well and Mario Manningham escorted out of bounds inside the 15 at the 13 yard line of the Wildcats on a gain of about to four yards. Good job of Johnson Northwestern really stringing this play out because Michigan had something here. There he is Johnson comes in forces Manningham to the sideline uses that sideline as the extra defender. Smart football. Third down and about six for Michigan. And three of ten on third downs here today. And the Western defense came in tenth in the conference in third down conversion defense. Penny over the middle. Matthews change of direction stacked up very close to the first down inside the ten. And they've got a first and goal to go now for Michigan just outside the six. Adam Cadella, the linebacker, got there. Seven yard pickup. Wayne, you and I talk about all the time running routes with detail. Good job by Matthews knowing exactly where the six are to move the chains, getting there, sitting down in the zone coverage, and picking up the first down. Yeah, that's not inconsequential, Chris, because a lot of times, especially here at the college level, the kids don't run to the first down marker. That's the first thing they have to do in that situation, especially on third downs. Mike Hart on first and goal. They tried to go left again behind Jake Long and Adam. Prouse, John Gill responded on that defensive front for Northwestern. From Michigan, I continue to pound the ball behind Jake Long. And he's your all everything tackle, as good as there is in the country. Let him go out there and do his thing, run right behind him. Chad Henney played the first series of the first half and sat out and has uh, started the two series here in this third quarter. Ninth play of the drive for Michigan. Second and goal to go, the five of Northwestern. Penny. Carson Butler, touchdown, Michigan. Wayne Henney just engineered a masterful drive down the field. Great execution, a flurry between run and pass. And capping it off with a nice touch ball to his tight end, Carson Butler. Butler's first touchdown of the season. The extra point drive. And Zingel's got it through the uprights. 5.45 left to go. Penny on a five yard touchdown pass to Butler. Michigan draws close. Jack. Indiana and Iowa getting a little bit closer in Iowa City. Jake Christensen going back across to Brandon Myers. Look at the effort here to get in. The Hawkeyes miss the extra point, but it's 21-13 way. Thank you, Dave. Michigan is drawn closer here, and those folks in maize and blue are a little happier. Two-point lead Northwestern. Under six minutes to go in the third. Twin safeties back deep for the Wildcats. Ryan Wright on the kickoff. Good leverage. This little spin move. And it'll be first down coming up for Stewart on the return. Northwestern across its 25-yard line. Stewart on the return. Let's get down to Dara. Well, as we know, Mike Massey went out on that play uh, for Michigan a few plays ago, and it looks like they're working on his left knee. They, he laid him out for quite a bit, and it looks like he's trying to walk on it, but gingerly, he's not getting much elevation. That's his left knee. That's starting tight end, Mike Massey, and as you know, his backup, Karan Butler, went in there and just scored for Michigan, guys. Let's hope it's not serious. Mike's a senior. First down for Northwestern. Pichet, a little screen pass. Read beautifully. Brandon Harrison made a nice play on Omar Conte. A loss of two. That was an outstanding play in space. Conte has a little wiggle. He's shown it earlier.
Good job closing to the ball. Limiting the play. Northwestern, one of their concerns was to get off to a fast start. Well, they did that in the first half. Here in the second half, they've uh, sputtered a little bit. This is only their second offensive possession of the third quarter. Michigan dominated on a long touchdown drive. Bache called play. Again, trying to cross up the Michigan front. That play worked a little bit better in the first half than it has here in the second half. Jamison recovered to make the stop, along with Will Johnson on the defensive line. Well, and the part of the problem is that Michigan's defensive ends are coming up the field in a hurry. They're playing with explosiveness now. They're getting up the field. They're not blitzing necessarily right now. They're allowing the front four to apply pressure. Well, there's a little more sense of urgency on the Michigan side. Three man down line with Crable in the slot. Third and nine. Thompson first down up at the 48 yard line of Northwestern. Good pitch and catch. Donovan Warren the coverage for the Wolverines. Good pitch and catch but also good pre snap read by C.J. Pache picking up the blitz. He knows he's got to get rid of it in a hurry. And he finds his receiver who's playing one-on-one. -on -one. And yeah, hey, get fired up. You know you're going up against a freshman cornerback. If you're going to challenge anybody one-on-one, -on -one, why not go there? 23-yard pass play, first down to the 49. Conte, good seal around the end. Gain of seven down to the 44. Back to the studio, Dave Rebson. Dave? tight in Evanston it's tight in Champaign as well Wayne and Penn State trying to tie it up here on a third and goal Rodney Kinlaw stopped by Antonio Steele they kicked the field goal but Penn State still down four. Now the action just starting to heat up on this beautiful late September afternoon around the Big Ten. Dante over 100 yards rushing 105 yards and 13 carries. Second down. Bache waited as long as he could. Jamison forced the blocker back into the quarterback, Kurt Mattis, and Bache goes down. A sizable loss back to the 49 yard line. Loss of almost 10. And it was good penetration by Jamison. And this is just effort effort and ability to get your leg out and trip him. That's what it looked like here. See him coming off the field, gets a little foot out. You're right. Third trip. Counts as a sack, though. Sure, especially if you can get away with it. <laughs> Third down and ten. Blitz. Lost lane. Tough catch. First down, Michigan 40 yard line. Morgan Trent was right there. A bullet fired by Boucher from a very tight pocket. Fifth catch of the day for Ross Lane, a gain of about 11. No, he fits this ball into a very tight window. Trent closing on it. Good job by the receiver of coming back to the football. That's what makes the play here. Ross Lane keeps working back towards the quarterback. He doesn't allow Trent to come in between him and the ball. First down to the 39 of Michigan. Boucher screen. Drake Dunsmore with a gain of almost five yards. Chris Graham responded. We talk so much about how the spread offense, you want to get everything to the outside. Meanwhile, Western injury. Uh, Joel Belding unable to continue. So an injury timeout here. Joel is a junior. And uh, Joel now gets up under his own power and heads off. Join host Mike Hall. Find out what's happening on campus as your school preps for the big game. Get up to the second report. See campuses battle it out to determine who has the best football atmosphere. Friday night tailgate. Fridays 8 Eastern 7 Central only on the Big Ten Network. Second down and about five for Northwestern. Bache. Nothing there. CJ Bache the ball John Crable in the hole. Blew it up. A loss of one. And it's Sean third Crable. down and six. 
And that's exactly Crable doing what he does, and that's getting up the field. A bit surprised by another draw play by Bechet, but this guy's a player. He leads the conference and tackles for loss, and you know he gets on the other side of the ball. And today, Chris, his role a little bit different. He's normally outside of the strong side linebacker spot, but today, with a three-man down line, the spread offense, Crable is actually a defensive end. And he's widening his stance a bit. Bechet. Tough pass there, underthrown. Rashid Ward, the intended receiver. Jamar Adams and Obi Izay had the coverage for Michigan. And the punting unit comes on for Northwestern. Shot at Jamar Adams there. He passes the eyeball test. That's what you want your safeties to look like. Big physical and still able to run with the receivers. Matthews and Manningham back deep. Demos trying to perch. And the catch made, fair catch by Matthews back inside the 10 yard line. I want to welcome viewers watching the Big Ten Network today on RCN and Wide Open West Systems. Hope all you watching the Big Ten Network for the first time today in Chicago and the rest of Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, and Pennsylvania enjoy today's games. Glad to have you all on board on RCN and Wide Open West. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Dara McIntosh. This has been a good one. Northwestern leading by a very slim, tenuous two point margin, but Michigan backed up to its six yard line to begin this drive. The veteran Chad Henney back at quarterback. Mike Hart in the end zone. Henney going for the screen pass. Manningham unable to outrun the defense to the corner. Shoved out of bounds by Brad Phillips and Quinton Davy. We've seen this bubble screen a number of times, which tells me that it's an automatic check when they get Northwestern in certain coverages. See Manningham running the bubble screen. Arrington's run it. Right now, Henny again, that last series, Wayne, he was very efficient, very fluid. Yep. See if he can continue. Gain of three, second and seven. Manningham uncovers again, this time for a first down and a whole lot more. And he's across the 25 yard line, not near the 26 of Michigan. Reggie McPherson brought him down, and Manningham a bit shaken up. 16 yard gain. Prior to this game, Manningham only had one touchdown, but he has a number of catches in the game. He got to, he got to the paint early. This is what they want to do, keep him in the ball. They want the ball in his hands because he's good with running with the ball after the catch. Yeah, and he can make people miss. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, Chris. You're right. And he's one miss away from going all the way. Arrington, the man in motion. Henny looking that way quickly. Arrington in the flat with two men to beat. And he's turned back to the 30. Pretty well covered. Brad Phillips was there. He took the football away after the whistle. Sherrick McManus also in on that stop. Pickup of about four to the 30-yard line of Michigan. It's interesting because that play, McManus, the cornerback for Northwestern, was matched up against Arrington. Last play, he was matched up against Manningham. So they're moving their guys around defensively for Northwestern. Michigan, conversely, they're saying, hey, if you want to play man, we're going to run you guys all over the field. We're going to go left side, right side, tire your guys out in the secondary. Second and six time winding down to this third quarter. Penalty markers down. Looked like a false start. False start. Number 52. Pretty windy down on the field as uh, Steve Payman's microphone uh, will tell you. Stephen Schilling in the guilty party. And time is wound down in this third quarter. Chad Henney, the senior, rallying Michigan on the road at Northwestern. Mike Hart contributing as well as he always does. Tight ball game. 16-14 Wildcats as we head to the fourth. You're watching the Big Ten Network. Along with Dara McIntosh and Chris Martin, Wayne Larrabee started the fourth quarter. Northwestern leading by two. Michigan facing second down and 11. Mutual alumni spotlight. Michigan has the most 
grads living in the Chicagoland area of any school to the Big Ten. And he red hot back to the door. Manningham latches on, and he's tackled right away. Good short tackle to the open field made by Quinton Davey. Back to the studio and Dave Rebson. Dave? Tackle by. Oh, we want to get you updated on Indiana and Iowa and the Hoosiers getting a little breathing room. Josiah Sears pulls his way in for his fourth TD of the year. 28-14 in the fourth. Would be a huge win for Indiana, but I will tell you this, Iowa is very injury riddled right now. They have lost, they lost a lot of people at uh, Wisconsin last week. No doubt, but Indiana needed to bounce back, so tested their resiliency. Third and eight facing Michigan here. A little bit less than eight yards to go, actually. They're four of 11 on third downs, but Chad Henney is red hot. 14 of 19, 151 yards and two touchdowns. Early going fourth quarter. Great to have you aboard. This has been a good one. Good protection. Got the first down to Matthews who reached it across as he escaped out of bounds near the 36 yard line of Michigan. Back to the sidelines in Dara McIntosh. You know, guys, I'm sitting here on the northwestern side of the bench, but these are all Michigan alumni, especially Jim Bolden and Dave Cadella, whose sons actually play for Northwestern. But you guys played together at Michigan, is that correct? We sure did. That's correct. How, how is it that your sons both decided to come play for Northwestern? That's so, some, uh, well, I'll let you answer that they're question. They're smarter than we are? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, interesting. Uh, Dave's son, of course, is uh, playing in his fifth year here yeah, at exactly Northwestern. Right. And Michael, our son, is in his freshman year. So it's a little bit of time frame difference. But yeah, they're playing together this year. And it's, uh, it's exciting for us because we're from Evanston. We kind of, we've lived in Evanston for about 16 years. And this is where Michael has grown up. So That must be exciting. Who do you root for on offense? In what now? In Who do you root for? There's no, I see no maize and blue here. Oh, you got to no, have. No, I learned, I learned uh, three years ago. I came with a Northwestern shirt, but I had a little blue underneath. One of our Bose Boys shirts. And after the game, Adam came up and said, Good to see you're wearing Northwestern colors. He looked underneath my shirt. And I was Can't do that. Can't I was do that. for that and haven't done it since. Okay, so today you root for Northwestern. Absolutely. Every week we root for Northwestern. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Derek. Deontay Battle bumped the Michigan receiver off of that play, and no flags. Boy, Carr. Uh, Made sure one of the uh, folks in stripes got an earful. Second down and ten. Chad Henney again started Second the ball game, Michigan played one series, led Michigan to a touchdown, and then Ryan Mallett finished the first half. And with Michigan trailing at halftime, there's the contact. With Michigan trailing at halftime, 16 to 7, it was the senior who came out at the outside of the second half. He's been there ever since. Mike Hart. John Gill, Adam Cole, the ball carrier. All around the football, and Hart gets a gain of a couple of yards. Northwestern imploring the crowd to get fired up. Their defense knows it's a big stop opportunity here. Michigan at halftime, just two of eight on third down conversions, three of four here in the second half. Third down and eight. Watch number 16, Adrian Arrington. Motion from Butler, the tight end. Penny, good protection. Throw the hands of Matthews. Being hounded by David Orduba. And Northwestern gets the stop. And that's a big hold by Northwestern going with its nickel package. So Orduba coming off the bench playing solid coverage. Nice adjustment by Coach Greg Colby. To go at the nickel package and bottle up the receivers in Michigan. Zoltan Mesco for Michigan. Zoltan Mesco in punt formation. Rashid Ward back deep. He's returned three punts for 25 yards. Boy, Mesco hits a beautiful punt again. Muffed by Ward, recovers back at the one yard line of Northwestern. Oh, has the table turned here. Northwestern will be 99 yards away when we come back.
Dave Revson, our Big Ten Network Studios, Notre Dame and Purdue. Still a little fight left in the Fighting Irish. Evan Sharpley, 70 yards to Duval Camara. They miss the extra point, but still down 14. Thanks, Dave. Right here, Northwestern backed up to its one yard line. And without their great running back, Tyrell Sutton, the Doak Walker candidate, he was injured in this game right here. This is week two against Nevada on that move right there. And another look at it. It's an ankle injury that has lingered for three weeks, and no one can quite figure it out. But Sutton has been unable to go. He came back in that game and caught a swing pass for 25 yards. But he's not been able to uh, get back on the field since. Meanwhile, in his stead here today, Omar Conte has rushed for 107 yards on 13 carries with a 49-yard touchdown run. Western in a tough spot right here, Wayne. First down. Not much there. Just give it to the fullback straight ahead. Everybody punched in. Mark Woodson on the carry. This is where you got to get low pad level and dry. Pretty much a stalemate. Mm -hmm. Adam Crum didn't get low enough on that block. Number 77. That's where he wanted to go. No gain. Second down at the one yard line for Northwestern. The original line of scrimmage was going to be the two yard line, but a holding penalty against Northwestern turned into a one yard penalty half the distance to go, so they're back at the one yard line. On the punt return. Now to the shotgun. Break it up, incomplete. Oh, what a hit made by Graham to break up that beautiful throw to Drake Dunsmore. Engelman was also there. Wayne, that time we got what we call a two deep beater. Cover two, you get your tight end right up the seams, but a nice shot by the safety to jar the ball loose. Yeah, I mean, the linebacker, Chris Graham, was there, but watch this hit by Engelman. You talk about timing. Yeah, great timing, and a good job by the linebacker of carrying that route. Injured Wolverine down on the field. I believe that's uh, Chris Graham. It is Chris Graham who's down. You referenced it earlier. There's been a lot of hitting going on on both sides of the ball. Guys are really flying around. Bodies colliding. 12 and a half to go. Northwestern clinging to a two point lead and facing third and 10 at their one yard line. When you're pinned this far back, does it, uh, I guess, kind of restrict what you can do in your spread offense, Chris? I mean, no question about it. I mean, you got to go with a conservative play, but you're probably going to look towards your interior wide receivers and make short, simple cuts. Good to see that guy, Chris Graham, getting off the ground. He's an active linebacker. He's been flying around all day. One of those guys that when you watch tape on him, he quickly jumps off and gets your attention. Third and ten at the Wildcat one yard line. Bechet with Conte behind him. Bechet. Got a first down. Ross Wayne up across the 20 yard line of the 22. Morgan Trent brought him down. 21 yard gain and they're out of the hole. Well, and this is the definition of Northwestern being aggressive. Because they run a double move here, backed up in the end zone, having the confidence in Boucher and Ross Lane to go ahead and execute. I mean, you think they're going to be conservative? Not so much. They run an out and up. Ross Lane, nice job of going attacking the football. Air tight pass protection on the third down call. Now Roberson gets the call around the end and picks up a yard or two. Sean Crable makes the stop for Michigan. Wayne again, what a gutsy call though. Particularly backed up, cornerback reads that, and that could be pick six. Well, I mean, here's the other thing. I mean, if anybody holds on the line, that's uh, points for Michigan too. Second down. Holding in the end zone. Can't do it. Conte, a man in motion. And now Bechet has to call a timeout. 
So that's the first time out taken by either team here in the second half. Just under 11 and a half minutes to go. Northwestern trying to work out of its own end, and I mean from deep at its own end. It's 30 minutes of highlights, analysis, and features dedicated to the world of Big Ten women's athletics. The Big Ten Women's Show, Monday nights at 7.30 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, and Dara McIntosh. Beautiful afternoon to be at a football game in Evanston, Illinois. Michigan has a strong following here as well close to a capacity crowd at Ryan Field and they've seen a good one. These two coaching staffs these two teams come out and done quite a job here today both sides when they're battling I and mean, these guys both sides are being physical they're playing hard they're not quitting on plays they're going through the whistle everything that you want your players to do. Pache 20 35 passing 268 yards one pick. Second down for Northwestern. About eight yards to go. Good protection again. Bechet trying to step up. Trying to get away. Cannot. First it was Taylor, then it was Jamison, and the man who finally put him away was Obi Ize. Right at Michigan there, just getting the number of guys right up the gut, right up the middle. Penetration again, collapsing the pocket. Zay getting in there, getting involved. Michigan looking for a spark here, trying to figure out who's going to make the next big play. Third down, still eight yards to go, Northwestern. The Shea has the ball knocked away. Michigan's got it. Looked like Brandon Graham deflected it loose, and Sean Grable comes up with it, and Michigan's got it at the Northwestern 16. Well, Wayne, when you're sitting in the pocket, you cannot let that ball get away from your body. That time, Boucher did. He did not keep it tight here. You'll see it. The ball gets away from his body, and a great play, though. The heads up to go for the swipe and get the ball out of there. Could be the game-changing play Michigan has been looking for. Best field position to start a drive for the Wolverines. Mike Hart unable to escape to the outside on the left side of the line. And again, John Hill responds from the interior of the Northwestern front. Well, big plays are infectious. And how you think about uh, look at Mike Hart there fixing his jersey. They've been all over him today, grabbing just about everything they can. Interesting to see here how Michigan comes out. You know, those big plays are infectious. See if they try and punch this ball in the end zone here. Eight tackles for John Gill. Most of them on Mike Hart. Henny. Looking to step up. Tripped up. Shovels it forward. Incomplete. That is not a fumble. It's an incomplete pass. John Gill again draped all over the uh, quarterback. He has played this game on Michigan's side of the line. Well, he's been an absolute beast. I mean, you see he keeps going. Oh, he's returning the trip favor. <laughs> he tripped the there. <laughs> he it. Well, you know, you've got to be resourceful. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> Third and ten, Michigan. This would be huge for Northwestern to hold Michigan here. Michigan 5 of 13 on third downs. Henny. End zone. Touchdown. Arrington. Oh, what a throw and catch. 16-yard touchdown pass, and Michigan back in the lead. Well, this is great play call. Great delivery. Look at that zip. Knowing that you're going to catch the ball in traffic, Arrington knowing exactly where he's supposed to be, catches Northwestern in their nickelback coverage. Good play call by Michigan. Excellent execution. After the turnover they got from their defense, you had the feeling they had to go in and score six offensively. And now, of course, the seventh coming up here with the extra point. Unless they want to go, now they're going to go for two. They had the uh, offensive unit on the field. Now they take a timeout. 
Trying to decide whether to go to two for two or not. They're leading it 20 to 16. And then we talked about Arrington and how effective he is, particularly on third downs. He just seems to step up every time they need it on the third down conversion. That time, getting to the paint. Let's take a look at the Cooper Tires big stop of the game. Northwestern on third down, Chris. And you're going to see great effort here by Michigan. Fighting through, keep penetrating, keep going to the ball. Big Graham making a play. Brandon Look at him. Graham. Juicing the team up. And Crable, who else but Crable to uh, gather it in. And that's one Bechet is going to wish he had back. Again, he lets the ball get a little bit away from his body. But a better play by the defenders of Michigan. Each side has two timeouts remaining. Michigan has thought better of going for two. They're going to take one here. So Jason Gingell back on for the point after. And with a hold of Zoltan Mesco. Right down the boulevard. Michigan roars into the lead with a couple of second half touchdowns. 9.53 to go in the game. Michigan 21, Northwestern 16. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by U.S. Bank, home of the five star service guarantee. By Yield Guard BT Triple, the Yield Protection System. And by Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Welcome back to Evanston. Does Northwestern have an answer for Michigan's 14 unanswered points here in the second half? The Wolverines back on top. Simmons to the 30. Nice return. Close to the 34 yard line of Northwestern. Chad Henney missed the last couple of games due to a right knee injury. You see the brace on his right knee. Absolutely, Wayne. And one of the big question marks was how is that knee going to respond in the heat of battle? And you'll see it here. Henney, he gets good knee bend right there. Good knee bend. He plants that foot in the ground and he's able to deliver a strike. So it looks just fine to me. That was a medical <laughs> telestration. <laughs> Bechet trying to squeeze that one in incomplete. Boy, Harrison was in the shirt of Ross Lane that time. Well, you got Michigan's defensive backs. They're snuggling up a little closer to Northwestern's wide receivers, and they're challenging them. They're not letting them run around in space. They're getting a lot tighter coverage. How does all of this, the, the fact that Michigan now has the lead, how does that change the way Northwestern calls offense, the way Michigan plays defense? Well, I think Northwestern has to stay with what they're doing. It was working earlier, continue to spread the guys out. Michigan's just being much more aggressive defensively. Ponte, two string tackle oh, made Ponte, by player. Taylor, Terrence Taylor down to Dara on the sidelines. You know, after uh, Karan Butler came off of the field, after Sean Crabo recovered that fumble, he came over to the sidelines to hype up the fans behind the bench. But what you guys don't know is that this field holds 47,000 fans, and I'm telling you, I must estimate over three quarters of them are wearing maize and blue. This crowd feels like a Michigan crowd, and this Michigan team knows it. Well, we told you, a lot of Michigan alums living in this Chicagoland area. Northwestern just three of six and third downs of the second half. Facing third down here. Got an open receiver. Got a first down. Tim Thompson out of bounds. 49-yard line of Northwestern. So this drive will continue off a 10-yard gain. Donovan Warren is the man they worked on. Well, big conversion and smart again to attack the young corner. You know he's a freshman. Make him go out there and earn his stripes. Good job finding the sticks by Tim Thompson. First down. Just over nine minutes to go here in the fourth. Northwestern has led much of the way. They're trailing right now. Roberson and Conte in the backfield. They're going to Conte. Conte unable to get away. As a big Tim Jamison grabbed his ankles and would not let go. So pick up about three. Down to the 48-yard line of Michigan, second and seven. 
Big Tim's been active today. He's been getting up the field, wrapping up guys in space, and applying that interior pressure. And he's the rush end, but he's had to do a lot of his work on the run against the running game. Slot to the top, slot to the bottom of your screen. Conte alongside the quarterback. Conte stays in the block. Oh, nice catch made, juggling catch made by the wide receiver Eric Peterman for a first down inside the Michigan 40 at the 37 yard line. 11 yard gain. And Northwestern again working this choice route against the safety of Michigan. Felt the inside pressure, so Peterman wisely breaks it to the outside. Good concentration to haul in the cat. How about the block by Conte on the defensive lineman coming uncovered up the middle? And that allowed Bache to make the throw. Second, first down. 37-yard line of Michigan. Blitz coming. Bache. Oh, it's in the air. Intercepted by Jamison down the sidelines. Jamison of the 25 is it knocked out of bounds from behind by Ross Wayne. Brandon Harrison was coming on the blitz. And another sudden change for the catch. You gotta feel this blitz. Now Bache's gotta pick this up in his pre-snap read. He doesn't see the blitz. It's coming from his blind side. Excellent job. And Harrison getting in there and stripping the ball. Chris. Again, and I've been watching several of their games on tape. Bache, it does not have that that inner awareness that great quarterbacks have of knowing from behind how close the rush is. He may have seen the blitz, but he did not feel it, and, and therefore was not in a position to deal with it. Second time Bache has had the ball knocked loose from behind. Mike Hart goes to work for Michigan. And the Wolverines can put a dagger in this one if they can score a touchdown here. Adam Coletta, Cadella rather, makes the stop for Northwestern short game. Nothing has come easy for Mike Hart here today. That's the thing about CJ, does a lot of things well, but you get the feeling he does not have that sixth sense of, hey, somebody's coming from behind. Right. That clock's not going off, it's just not registering. Second down, about eight. Snap fumbled by Henny. Covers it up back outside the 20. It'll be third down and about 11 coming up for the Wolverines. Give Michigan credit because they've come out of the locker room at halftime fired up. I mean, it's particularly on the defensive side of the ball, which bleeds into offense. That time, Henny just couldn't put a handle on it. But you get the sense that the coaches of Michigan made the adjustments, but they got into the ears of their players because these guys are coming out playing with a little more edge than they did in the first half. For the game, Michigan 6 of 14 on third downs. Much better than that in the second half. Penny. Everybody deep. Got a man wide open. Leaping grab out of bounds. That ball sailed on Henny, and Arrington made the catch, but he was out of bounds. Well, that time it was a breakdown and cover. Anytime you get a wide receiver this wide open, that's a tough, tough catch to make. Almost impossible, but anytime you get wide receivers that wide open, you know it's a breakdown fundamentally in the coverage of Northwest. Gingell missed a 26 yarder earlier. This one from 39. And it is no good. He pulled it to the right. Northwestern with another shot down by five with just over six minutes to go. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Dara McIntosh back at Northwestern. Can't keep up with all the Saturday action? Well, then catch up with Big Ten Extra Points. Every scoring play from every Big Ten game all in one show. Big Ten Extra Points Monday nights, 7 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Northwestern trailing by five. Just over six minutes ago, their defense gets a big stop following a Wildcat turnover. Bache goes to work. The out, not quite there. Off the mark with that pitch to Thompson. Coverage by Warren, the freshman underneath. Look at them to continue to challenge Donovan Warwick. 
Coach Garrick McGee knows that he's a young corner. Now it's getting down to crunch time. You're going to see what he's made of. Second and ten. Four-man rush. Bichet. Gets it out across the 22 to the 25. Gain of three. Third down. And eight coming up for Northwestern. Jim Jamison, defensive end, caught up with him. Michigan's getting good coverage down the field, forcing Pache to hold the ball longer. Good job of fighting through, making the effort. Michigan's secondary really stepping up, blanketing the receivers of Northwestern. Another third down call here. Third down, a little bit less than eight. Through the hands of Ward, intercepted by the Michigan Wolverines. Obi Ize makes the interception. He's playing in place of the injured John Thompson. And another big turnover forced by the Michigan defense. And well, this is why you work tip drill. Ball in the air, go get it. One handed, pull it in. Obi Ize showing that he has hands. Okay, here's the read. Ball goes in the air. Way to beat Johnny on the spot. This second half, Michigan's defense in particularly has continued to make big play after big play. And another opportunity to put this one away. First down at the 26. Mike Hart. Adam Cadella on the tackle pursuing from behind. Gain of two. Nothing easy for Hart today. No, he's getting worked out. Northwestern flowing to the football. Getting a lot of bodies, up, as we've said earlier, population. Bringing most to Evanston when they go to make a tackle on Hart. This beleaguered Northwestern defense came in ranked 10th in scoring, 9th in yards allowed, 10th in passing yards allowed. Trying to hang tough and give the offense another crack at it. Under five minutes to go in the game. Hart trying to reverse field. Got by Deontay Barrett. Mike Hart down the sideline to the five, reaching for the pylon. And they're going to say out of bounds at the one. Reggie McPherson chased him down. 23 yard running play for Mike Hart. And Wayne, we talked about it a few times today gap and lane integrity. You know Hart has vision and cutback ability, showing it here. You have to maintain discipline. You cannot overrun it. He is a great cutback runner, and he always manages to find that crease. Mike Hart, the tail of the team, up to 90 yards rushing now. Hart, touchdown. Wayne, that's a play of attrition. They just wore down Northwestern D-line. Those guys have been put out on the field because of the sudden change in the turnovers. And you can just tell that the interior line, those guys are getting worn down. Mike Hart just waltzes into the end zone. Mike Hart carried the final 24 yards of that drive, triggered by the turnover. The interception. And Michigan in command by 11. And make it a 12-point lead. So the Wolverines, it took them a while to get on track. But they've scored 21 unanswered points here this afternoon in the second half. Meanwhile, Michigan last week against Penn State, it was all about readiness, toughness. It was about a freshman quarterback scoring his first touchdown of his career, Ryan Mallett. But really, the story was Mike Hart. 44 carries a career high. He would not be denied. Mike Hart rushing for 153 yards. And Lloyd Carr and Joe Paterno, two legendary coaches, hooking up. Holiday Inn Express scoring drive. Hart with a one-yard touchdown run. He set it up on a 23-yard scamper. So often, as well. So often when we talk about Hart's ability to run with the football, but people don't realize he is a great blocker also in pass protection. He's just an all-around football player. Stewart and Simmons back deep. 
And this will be Stephen Simmons. In the game. Holy Simmons has some running room. Across the 45 50 in the Michigan territory to the 45 yard line of the Wolverines. <laughs> Stephen Simmons on a 51 yard return. Just, just when Northwestern needed two Simmons making a play. And Wayne, he did a nice job of setting up his blocks. You'll see it first, he fields it cleanly. Guys getting on bodies. Finding the running lane and having the speed to hit it. First down to the Michigan 45 is where they've got it spotted. Mache hit from behind. A tight pocket collapsing now, and this time Brandon Graham got there. And if he didn't get the quarterback, Adam Patterson would have. Well, you are seeing a collapsing pocket. And credit the defensive end of Michigan. They're coming off the edge in a hurry, and they're beating Northwestern's linemen with speed. Loss of five, second of 15, screen play incomplete. I think they wanted to get it to Conte, but there were so many jerseys of both colors in the facility, it was hard to tell. Bache has really been under siege. Especially in the fourth quarter. Ron English cranked it up a gear or two with his Michigan defense. Give Coach English props. He went and got into his guys at halftime, got them fired up because they've been the responsible for Michigan getting back in. It starts with that defense coming out, making big plays, and getting the ball back to their offense. Third down and 15, Northwestern. Bache fumbles. At the 45-yard line, Michigan football. Taylor recovers. Jamison on the hit. Crable was there as well. Taylor the recovery. Fourth straight Northwestern possession that ends in a turnover. Wayne, the last couple series, Pache has been a Northwestern statue. He hasn't moved his feet. The pressure is just collapsing. In Michigan, they're pinning their ears back and coming after it, collapsing the pocket. I don't think Bechet has been the same since he was blitzed by Brandon Harrison from behind and he's not lost picking up. No, exactly. He's not picking up the pre snap blitzes. He's standing back there, not moving his feet, clearly not feeling the pressure. Expect a healthy dose of Mike Hardoff left tackle. And that's what they get right there. Gain of about three yards. Kevin Mims, the defensive end, made the stop for Northwestern. Inside of four minutes to go for the game, and Michigan leading by 12. Timeout Northwestern. Their second timeout. Mike Hartson, there's no him coming out of this game right now. Just keep feeding me. Again, he needed 139 rushing yards today to set Michigan's all time career rushing record. Passing Anthony Thomas. I'll tell you something, if he gets it today, he will have earned it. It's been a tough day for Mike Hart. At halftime, he was uh, averaging less than three yards a carry. But it speaks to his durability. Meanwhile, the Michigan defense has risen to the occasion in the second half trailing after trailing at halftime. Well, they have. They've made play after play. They come up with a big interception with Trent. Guys getting up the field. Graham having the wherewithal to strip it out here. Hart again. Good second effort. Gets him another two yards down to the Northwestern 41, where it'll be third down for Michigan. Three and a half minutes to go for the game. And again, Wayne, Michigan's defense has been the object of derision. So many people have attacked the defense, particularly early in the season with the number of points that they've given up. But this is the defense that's responded. And come out of the halftime getting after it. Tim McAvoy shaking up, slow to get up. That left, favoring that left leg. Mike Hart was slow to get up. We mentioned several times and those of you who've been watching all afternoon, there's been some good hitting in this game. Big time hit. That doesn't look good for McAvoy, the right guard. He needs some assistance in getting off. Six to go, Michigan. Third down for the Wolverines, about six yards to go. Corey Zerbel is in in place of Tim McAvoy at right guard. Third down. 
Butler, a tight end, is the fullback with the heart, the tailback. It's Butler in motion. Henny. Matthews. Oh, out ran three defenders and the cut gets the first down. And that may do it. John Gill finally brought him down. I'll tell you what, it looked like they had a purple fence in front of Greg Matthews, and he just put the brakes on and went the other way for 15 yards. Yeah, they did. They had the purple fence, but the fence just kept sliding, and it was a nice job of cutting it back right there. <laughs> Making all three of those guys. That's not fair, is it? <laughs> Watch him stop on a dime. <laughs> My goodness. Good job of sticking that foot in the ground and changing directions by Matthews. Again, Northwestern just one timeout remaining. Michigan on the drive. Hart. Slipping defenders, motoring his way inside the 20 yard line, down to the 19. Mike Hart on a gain of seven. Quinton Davy the tackle. I can tell you, Wayne, as a former defensive player, this is where you get tired of hitting a guy like Mike Hart. He is a pounder. We said it earlier. He likes to run behind his pads. He has great balance, and you just physically get tired of putting lick after lick on Mike Hart. And, and it's not just about Mike Hart. It's about Jake Long and Adam Cross up front. They're putting some hits out there as well. The left tackle to the left guard. Second down. Hart again running left. This time they meet him with pressure from the backside of that play. Corey Wooten came across. Wooten's played well here today. They've been disappointed in him up until now, but he's factored in today. Yeah, he's played well. Going up against arguably one of the best tackles in the game. But Wayne, you know what's interesting is Michigan came out at the beginning of the game. Hold up. Western calls timeout. This is a 30-second. Unofficially, Mike Hart 27 yards short of becoming Michigan's all-time leading rusher. It's a matter of will it happen today or will it happen next week at home against Eastern Michigan. Lloyd Carr knows his team has been in a dogfight here today, but boy, he has to be happy with the way they responded in the second half of this ball game. Absolutely. They bounced back. They were resilient. They continued to make big play after big play. They gave up 16 points and 309 yards of offense at half by halftime. And did not force a turnover, but here in the second half, they forced four consecutive Northwestern turnovers. And that's a clear sign that Coach Carr has good control over his team. Getting his guys fired up and able to bounce back. Third down, Michigan. Mike Hart met at the pass short of the first down. Mike Hart, the ball carrier. We welcome those of you joining us. Illinois, Penn State. Good ball game down in Champaign. We've had a good one here. Michigan salting it away. Wayne Larrabee along with Chris Martin and Dara McIntosh. Northwestern led 16 to 7 at halftime. Michigan has scored 21 unanswered points here in the second half. And the defense of Michigan has forced four consecutive Northwestern offensive possessions to end in turnovers. Absolutely. That's been the message in a bottle, and they've been able to give the ball back to their offense. And again, Chad Henney has been running the running the offense with efficiency. He seems comfortable in what they're doing. He has good command. He's been the field general. Not sure why he came out of the game earlier, but he's led his team pretty intensely today. Northwestern has uh, stopped the clock for the final time. 54 seconds left to go in the game. Matt Fitzgerald had his Wildcats ready to play. A very impressive first half at them on both sides of the ball. But in the second half, Michigan made some adjustments, brought some pressure on C.J. Bechet, forced one turnover after the other. And as you would expect from a uh, character group from Ann Arbor, they responded to the deficit at halftime. And that's where you show it's a test of character and a test of attitude. His guys came out in the second half with attitude. They knew that they weren't, they did not want to give this game up. They refused to lose. You had the senior leadership, guys flying around making plays, giving great effort. And it really starts with Chad Henney. 193 yards, three TDs. Nice job coming back, showing that there's no effects on that knee. Northwestern out of timeouts, 54 ticks on the clock. Michigan on fourth down. We'll run it. 
Mike Hart trying to shake loose, and he apparently has the first down to the 15-yard line. Reggie McPherson brought him down. It's a gain of about five yards for Hart, and that should pretty much do it. They move the chains, and now wind the clock. So for a while, it looked like all those maize and blue fans would be disappointed here on their trek to Evanston. But the Wolverines, with a strong second half, will prevail and go to 2-0 and in Big Ten play. And it just wasn't about Mike Hart. You had a lot of guys play well. The receivers for Michigan were making plays all day long. Manningham got in the end zone. He was stretching out. Defensively, you saw guys moving around, creating fumbles, getting a lot of pressure. So Michigan showed a number of big guys coming out here making a lot of plays. Congratulations to Lloyd Carr and the Michigan Wolverines. They prevail here in Evanston, overcoming a halftime deficit to win 28 to 16. So Mike Hart didn't get the Michigan all-time rushing record today, but he's likely to get it next week. It was Chad Henney who came out at quarterback to lead the Wolverines. The senior leads them to victory here today with three touchdown passes. Tough one for the Wolverines, but a victory nonetheless on the road. And they go to 2-0 in conference play. Again, the final score here at Evanston. Michigan 28, Northwestern 16. Chad Henney leads the Wolverines to their third consecutive win. We'll send you out to Iowa for Indiana and Iowa. Michigan replay. The Wolverines go on the road and continue to build momentum with a win at Northwestern. We'll have the highlights. We'll also meet Michigan's Mr. Positive, who patrols the defensive line of scrimmage. And we'll look ahead to next week as we scout next door neighbor Eastern Michigan. All that and more coming up next. Michigan Replay with Lloyd Carr is brought to you in part by Pepsi, More Happy, by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA, by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, Gatorade, is it in you? By the University of Michigan Health System, working together, that's the Michigan difference. By Big Boy Restaurants, Big Boy, it's a Michigan thing. And by TCF Bank. For all your banking needs, all you need is a little TCF. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Michigan Replay, the Wolverines' first road game at Northwestern, and they get a victory 28-16. to But I got to tell you, you made me nervous there for a while. It was a lot <laughs> tougher than I think a lot of people expected. Well, there isn't any question, Jim. It was uh, the first time you go on the road, uh, a lot of young guys, and uh, Northwestern, I thought, really... Uh, played extremely hard. They were not the same team that we watched on film from the previous week. So give them some credit, but we struggled uh, in the first half. While we're doing this, I just thought I asked you, how's your cold? Because <laughs> you you sound <laughs> a little like, like you sound a little like Froggy here. Yeah, yeah. But you're you're okay. Yeah, I'm fine. folks out there worry about you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The big thing, too, is that you got Chad Henney back into the mix a little bit in this game against Northwestern. Well, I'd say more than a little bit, Jim, to correct you. But, uh, yeah, it, it was great to have him back. He has really worked extremely hard to, to get back to where he was uh, ruled uh, ready to play by the doctors, and uh, he started the game with a bang. Well, they got the ball first. This is the first play of the game. And it's kind of freakish. Well, it's a weird play here. Number, number 45, Obioze, uh, thinks the man's down. So instead of uh, finishing the tackle, he, I think he was afraid of a uh, late hit there. And and uh, they, run, they go 60 yards. Our defense stiffens uh, because Brandon Engelman saved a touchdown there because uh, it could have been 7 to nothing. They go up 3 nothing. Now, this is first possession of yours, Chad Henney, back in the ballgame. Well, we get good protection, and uh, third down, Chad throws uh, Adrian Arrington and continued uh, in this game to play extremely well as he has all year. Boy, nothing wrong with Chad's arm, huh? No, he's uh, uh, 
uh, ready to go. And Mario had uh, his best game of the year, caught 10 passes and uh, made some very good runs. And here's a great play by Chad going to his second receiver. Well, he looks left and uh, gets Mario, and Mario makes a guy miss, and uh, now we take the lead. Seven to three at this point. Now, Northwestern offensively in the first half did some things in the run game. I, I kind of think surprised you a little bit. Well, I think more than anything else, Obiaze was getting his first start in there, uh, Jim, and, and uh, they, they gave us a, a few wrinkles that were new. Yeah, but Obi really settled down, and, and uh, we played much better in the second half defensively. Here's the worst play of the game uh, from the standpoint that we don't get our defense set. Uh, we, we lined up wrong, and now you got to hold the defense. But even then, it would have been okay, but we let the ball outside the defense. So now uh, they, hit a, they, they get a big play there for, to take the lead. And then uh, out of the spread, uh, Bechet gets a little bit of a running play. Then he gets a 15-yard penalty for unnecessary. And they're in business again. Well, Jim, that penalty, uh, we, we uh, stop him here. But the 15-yard penalty gave him uh, an additional field position. And they kick a field goal uh, uh, to uh, extend the lead. That's a 49-yarder, 13-7. And, uh, it, and it, doesn't, it, it, it doesn't end there. The first half's not over. No, we're struggling on, on offense. And uh, uh, right here, Morgan Trent, when we need it, uh, comes up with a big interception. We got uh, decent field position here, and we put together our first or second drive of the uh, first half. And Ryan Mallett in a quarterback. Yeah, Ryan's, Ryan uh, came in after the first drive, made a nice throw there deep to Mario. Going to make another play here, scrambling around. Uh, again, a good presence. It looks down the field, finds Adrian Ayrton for a first down. But unable to convert. Well, we uh, uh, threw uh, three passes down there and, and couldn't make a first down and then uh, miss a field goal. So. Um, instead of it being 13 to 10 now, Northwestern gets uh, a couple of good plays here, a great uh, pitch and catch, and uh, they, they are on the march. They're on the march, and, and they're pretty confident. They're playing pretty confidently here in the end of this first half. Well, they, they, they played well in the first half. Uh, our defense did it with the exception of the big play, managed to keep them out of the end zone. Uh, but they did make three field goals, so now we're two scores down going into the half right. and not, uh, and having not played well. 16-7 the score at half. We might mention that Chad Henney's touchdown pass did break a record. He's now Michigan's leading touchdown pass uh, quarterback. But at 16-7, that's kind of an empty record at that point. You had to get this team get ready to go second half. Well, Jim, there were four drives in there where we were three and out uh, uh, three times and once five and out. So uh, we weren't doing much, and our defense, uh, with the exception of the one play, uh, did manage to keep them out of the uh, end zone, so we're still in the game. We're in good shape if we can just start uh, taking advantage and doing more things, on, uh, particularly on offense. Well, the Wolverines did more things on offense the second half. We'll be back to see those highlights, but first we hear from Mike Hart, who says it was nice to have old number seven back at the controls. Chad's a warrior, and, and like I said, when he comes in, we can run a couple different plays. You know, he's always gonna make the right reads. You know, Ryan's still young, but you know, Ryan did a great job today too. You know, he, he didn't he didn't turn the ball over. He did what he had to do, and then Chad came in the second half and, and really carried us. Michigan replay and Al Rose Steele take you inside the locker room. I think the defense, I mean, as a whole, you know, I think they all, everybody woke up, everybody started playing hard, everybody was where they were supposed to be, you know, where they were supposed to be in the first half, they was actually there in the second half, so created problems, we started getting more pressure from the D-line, and then, you know, when we went up, we got into a situation where they began to have to pass, you know, we can turn it loose, you know, I think when we came in, we wanted to stop the run and, you know, make them one-dimensional, make them have to pass, and in the second half, we finally got to that. Wolverines trailed Northwestern on Saturday at the half, 16-7. And, and the plan was to go with Chad Henney for the first series of the first half, first series of the second half. 
What changed your mind because you went with him the entire second half? Was it well, medical issue or well, how he was yeah. feeling? Well, our doctors and, uh, and Paul Schmidt, our trainer, you know, I think that they they felt that uh, uh, it was perfectly fine to, for Chad to play. He felt great. He looked good in practice. But uh, they did not feel that uh, he should play an entire game. He, cert he was not ready to do that. So our thoughts were... Play them uh, in the first court, in the first drive of each half, and then from there see how he felt. And uh, every time I ask him, he felt great. And here he comes. He up. looks great on that throw, didn't well, he? Well, that's a great throw. I mean, to coming to your left, and then uh, we get the running game going a little bit here, crossing midfield, great field position. And here on a first and ten, Chad hooks up again with Arrington. Well, you know, uh, we 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 really did a good job protecting Chad. And uh, this is another one of those timing routes that uh, he sets his feet, delivers the ball before the defender can get there. And Adrian is a sure-handed guy. And you made some great third down conversions. Here's one. Well, here's one by Greg Matthews, who he had three, I think, uh, on the day. And all of them were important that kept drives alive. And here, uh, Chad checks the ball down to Carson Butler. and. Uh, uh, now we take the lead for the first time. 16-14 at that point. Uh, they're still up, actually. You didn't get the lead at that point. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, you better stop that now. <laughs> you know, we, I've been known to do that. I know. You need to stop that. we got to get this highlight package in. You're down 16-14, but your defense starts playing, gets the ball back to your offense, and you guys go back to work. Well, here uh, uh, Chad hits uh, Mario in the quick uh, out and uh, keep a drive alive. Here is probably uh, as critical a play as there was in the ball game. This is a 60 yard punt. Uh, he's with the win and the ball turned over. Extremely difficult ball to catch in that wind and we get great field position defensively. Well, and that's the key. You got great field position. You let them out though on this play. They get the first down on you, but at this point, I think the defense really takes over, especially your front four. Well, they do, and, uh, and we get great pressure here, knock the ball loose, and uh, uh, Brandon Graham knocked it loose, and uh, Sean Craver got on it. We've got great field position now. And here's a third and ten laser from Henny. Well, this is uh, good a play as he fits it in there, uh, and, and there wasn't much space between the defender and the receiver. Now you have the lead. Now we have the lead. So Thank now God, you're, it's now about you're time. back. <laughs> it's about, you're telling me. Well, here on the second consecutive uh, possession, uh, we, we uh, hit the quarterback. Brandon Harrison made a wonderful play blitzing off the edge and uh, caused the ball to be uh, uh, thrown up in the air, in some way deflected. And Tim Jamison rambled down the sideline and we got a chance to go up by eight, but uh, uh, we can't convert. Yeah, he didn't get it in the end zone, then you missed the field goal. But here's their third possession and another turnover. Well, uh, it's, it's good zone coverage. We had good pressure. The ball was thrown slightly behind the receiver, and Obi uh caught the ball, and now we got another chance. Well, and Mike Hart helps you make it a little more comfortable. Well, this is an amazing football play because that play was starting out over right tackle and ended up uh, coming all the way back outside the left end. Then you go behind Jake Long again, you get in the end zone. Now things are a little bit more comfortable at 28-16, but on the ensuing kickoff... Well, you know, a week ago they ran one back 99 yards for a touchdown and against us here uh, at the time where you, you uh, uh, all you have to do is uh, uh, get them down and not let them have great field position, but they bust a return up there for 50-some uh, yards and great field position. But here comes your defense. Well, for the fourth straight uh, uh, possession there, Sean uh, comes off the edge, hits a quarterback, and uh, Terrence Taylor gets the ball, and now we can run the clock out. 28-16 uh, the final. Uh, talk to me about coming out of the game, and again, going back to, to Chad Henney and how he played in that second half, given the fact that you only wanted to get him a couple of series, how did he come out of that game with the knee health-wise? Well, I think he came out extremely uh, well. I think he, um, you know, got back into game competition. The speed of the game was good for him. The great news is that we did a great job protecting him, but I think he's uh, very close to being 
uh, back to 100%, and certainly mentally, uh, this was uh, you know a game I think that really uh, will be helpful to him because he knows uh, he's back. Yeah, don't want to you know I know that you're, this is probably too early to talk about this. Are you going to handle him pretty much the same way next week, or are you going to wait to see what happens in practice? Well, we're going to see what happens in practice, Jim. That's why you practice. You should know that. I was trying to get something good out of you, and you just you just threw me under the bus. Yes, I did. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I know no, you do. You, you know, enjoy really, that part of this. Really, that's what we've tried to do the last two weeks is to see how it goes. And Ryan Mallett is getting a lot of snaps. I thought he did some very good things in there And he's today. coming along, isn't he? I yes. mean, just, despite the fact that it didn't go as well as you'd like today, he's still getting that experience. Well, he had one really good drive there at the end of the half, Jim. If he went on the road for the first time in the Big Ten, and, you know, every time he plays, he's going to learn and he's going to get better from it. So I made one great uh, throw there deep to Mario. So there's some very positive things. And you can't buy the experience he's gained in the last three weeks. All right. That puts a wrap on the Northwestern game. When we come back, uh, we'll meet Chris Graham up close and personal. But first, we hear from that man, Chad Henney, who says it's a simple case of quarterbacking and taking what they give you. They're up front guys, they're, they're seven guys up front, really stopped the run and gave us a chance to give open lanes, open seams for us to throw the ball, and we, that's what our coaching staff did, took advantage of it. Now, the Pontiac performance play of the game. From the left hash at the 16, he drops the throw, has time, firing post cut at the goal line, touchdown Michigan, Adrian Arrington. What a throw by Henny. Man, that was a laser from Chad Henny. And Michigan, with a 20 to 16 lead, is going to go for two right here. Linebacker Chris Graham is in his senior year at Michigan. And like a lot of others, he's played a lot. But this year, he gets his first chance to start and be a senior leader. And to Graham, leading is about being positive. I try to make sure that I'm always positive. I try to be positive. Uh, I might have a little slump where I, I, I want to do better always. Even while I'm playing the game, I want to do better. Um, but you can never really hold your head down. And uh, I just try to be have a positive attitude because I am a leader. I'm trying to show my leadership to the guys that are seniors also and the young guys. So that way my team can move as one and we cannot be separated. So, you know, you try to have that same mindset and try to make sure that everyone is on the same page. So if I can show a little bit of my positive part of the team, you know, maybe the other guys will fill in with it. Chris is one of the more positive guys you'll ever meet. He takes obstacles in stride and makes the best of it, like his transition from high school to college. The little thing for me was um, just the time frame, how much time you was uh, spending between school and football. I was like, wow, I don't have no personal time. Where I want to hang out like everybody else. I see everybody doing uh, their own thing, but um, that's what it is. You come here, you take care of business. You, know, you don't want to really have too much time to yourself. Or Like um, in the second semester, you kind of have that little bit of time off and it kind of gets distracting. But I like the, you know, football in school, uh, having that orderly type of thing. So I grew up with that and I, I like it a lot. These days, Chris's positive spirit has been challenged the Wolverines' early struggles have brought out the vultures. Do you think this negative maelstrom will have an effect on Graham? This Indianapolis native says no way. I want to play every game like it's my last game, and I try to be on every play. So if someone can make it, I guarantee you that I, I tap my, my teammates and show them that I'm right there behind them, supporting them. And that, that's the type of mindset that I have there. Every game could be my last game to play, so I want to be uh, hungry as much as possible. And as far as like being with my team, I see those guys playing every day. I know how these guys have the ability, and no one gets to see it. And I just want everyone to move the same path to play that way. You know, it's just a growing thing. We have a lot of young guys; they're fast, and you know, this whole defense is fast. And guys want to, you know, feel like you know the defense is uh, sure-handed. We're really not. You know, we just need to get everybody on the same page and move together. When we had the opportunity of talking to Chris Graham, this kid just won't stop smiling and he won't stop being positive. And you know something, Jim? He's been that way since the day he got here, and that he'll be that way 25 years from now. He's just got a wonderful And he's really improved. Line. He's gotten better. Yes, he has. And he is a tough, competitive guy that uh, loves to play. All right, when we come back, 
We'll look ahead to next week in Eastern Michigan. But first, we hear from Brandon Engelman, who says, whoever the Wolverines play, they're going to be tough. Being Michigan, we, we got teams that's going to come after us no matter who they are, no matter what record they have, no matter what record we have, they're going to come after us every week, so we got to be prepared. Michigan Replay and Al Rose Steel take you inside the locker room. We just can't take any team lightly, you know. Every team's going to come after us, you know. Every team's going to want to put their best up against Michigan. So we just got to prepare hard every week in practice, you know, and come out and play our best on Saturdays. Wolverines at home again next week against Eastern Michigan, just up the road of Mac School. Um, again, I think this year, given what's happened in Rock College football coach, Strap it up every week, huh? Well, nobody knows that better than us, but it's true. When you look around, uh, some of the things that happened this past weekend, and of course, that's uh, it's such a, a long season, truthfully, and um, you know, a lot of things can happen. And if you aren't prepared, then you, you have turnovers, you give up big plays, and the next thing you know, you're fighting for your life. Well, uh, Jeff Jenick in his fourth year, Anthony, Andy Schmidt, their quarterback. This is this is a team that uh, beat Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois is pretty well respected. Well, it was a great win for him. And Jeff, I think, uh, you know, this is really a competitive team. He's in his fourth year. And you, you know his dad is a great player here at Michigan. And uh, he's, he's got this team uh, playing extremely hard. And the Anthony White's their big wide receiver on defense. Uh, Jason Jones is their big defensive tackle, 6'5", 270, leads the team in tackles for loss. Uh, he can play, and linebacker Daniel Holtzclaw is fourth in the NCAA in tackles over 12 a game. That's unbelievable statistics. I mean, I don't care what league you're hey, playing in, huh? That's, uh, that's, that's playing the game for 60 minutes because 12 tackles, 12 and a half tackles a game. You're getting to a lot of football. And, and besides Eastern Michigan, one of the things that I think that you have to look at is the health of your team. You're getting some guys nicked up a little bit. Well, we've got a lot of guys nicked up, Jim. We need to uh, uh, get in the training room this week <laughs> because uh, that you know we've had five real physical games. Saturday was a tough, hard-fought football game. and So uh, hopefully we can get them uh, back together. And we'd like to get some of these guys back, uh, John Thompson. Uh, but um, the good news is that Obi is a, we've had some guys step up and really play well uh, while guys were out. The other thing I wanted to mention is that Mike Hart, we were talking about it during the break, at the end of the game you'd have thought he made 60, 65 yards, maybe 50. He had over 100 again. He is now second in the all-time rushing list at Michigan. This kid's just amazing. Well, he is he, amazing. He, he's got to be your best friend, huh? Well, he, he's, um, he's a great leader in our football team. Of course, that's something really he's always been. But uh, he's a selfless guy, and, uh, you know, he has the respect of everybody. And when you have a guy like him, uh, you know, you, everybody's paying attention because nobody's going to play harder than he does. Yeah. Take your Vicks Vapo rub, okay? I, I need some, don't you? You do. <laughs> you do sound like Froggy and the Little Rascals. <laughs> hey, next week we'll talk Eastern Michigan. Hopefully he won't talk like Froggy, and you'll enjoy a victory as we come back to you same time, same place, right here on Michigan Replay. Michigan Replay has been brought to you in part by Abso Pure Water, delivering quality bottled water since 1908 by Sirius Satellite Radio, by the University of Michigan Alumni Association, uniting the leaders and best, www.umalumni.com, by State Farm, providing insurance and financial services, by AT&T, for a behind the scenes look at sports, visit attblueroom.com slash sports, and by Powered by Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA.